लास्ट को एक आया था 120 सेकंड के अंदर बहुत बड़ी पैमाने पे नुकसान हुआ तो इसका सिग्निफिकेंस जो डिजास्टर इवेंट का है वो सेकंड्स में है जी आप समझिए क्योंकि ये दो मिनट की बात आई तो यहाँ एक मिनट भी बहुत होते हैं तो जो हम लोग आज डिस्कशन कर रहे हैं तीन दिन का अमित सर के जो प्रयास हैं एस लखनऊ के अंदर आशीष पांडा सर दिल्ली से और जो भी हमारे जितने भी लोग हैं इससे जुड़े हुए हैं जो हम लोग गाइडेंस दे रहे हैं जो हमारे साथ काम कर रहे हैं तो दे जस्ट फोकस ऑन वन थिंग दैट कम से कम लोगों को इस बारे में पता चले और वो इसके बारे में जब पता चलेगा तो इंटरेस्टेड होंगे और कभी ना कभी हमारे पास इस तरीके की एक फोर्स क्रिएट होगी जिसको जानकारी भी होगी और जो कुछ कर भी सकेगी इसके राइट सर जी सर सर कमान आपके हाथों में है सर मेरे हाथों में है नहीं नहीं आशीष सर के कमान हाथों में है आशीष सर जैसा कहेंगे वैसा आप लोग करेंगे नहीं 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 बिल्कुल बिल्कुल करेंगे साथ में मिलके हम काम कर रहे हैं और भी बहुत सारे प्रोजेक्ट्स में हम काम कर रहे हैं सब एक दूसरे को शामिल करेंगे उन सब चीजों में है ना इट इज टेन थर्टी सो मे बी प्लीज प्लीज यू कैन स्टार्ट और अनुश्री मैम प्लीज नहीं अनुश्री मैम अनुश्री मैम प्लीज अनुश्री मैम प्लीज गुड मॉर्निंग टू वन एंड ऑल I, Dr. Anushri Singh, welcome you all on the second day of three-day EFDP Come Training Program on Disaster Risk Reduction and Disaster Management, mm -hmm. jointly organized by NIDM Delhi and SRMU. Before we begin, let me please brief about about the progress we made so far. The inaugural ceremony was graced by some great personalities of SRMU: Prof, uh, Professor Dr. A K Singh, the Vice Chancellor, Honorable Vice Chancellor, Sir. pro vice chancellor sir professor dr ajay prakash sir and nidm and from nidm professor dr anil gupta sir ji and shri ashish sir ji we also got the opportunity to learn about various aspects and uses of technology in in disaster management preparedness and risk reduction by professor chandan ghosh sir role of media in disaster management and risk reduction by asha sharma ma'am and basics and institutional mechanisms of dm in india by shri ashish panda sir we had a very we had a very great learning and i hope this will help us all in our life and moving ahead second day we we will be having three great speakers today and these are uh, engineer avdesh kumar sir assistant professor in vertis university bareilly he will be speaking on the topic science and technology innovations for drr dr arun a shah sir from wildlife sos bangalore he will be speaking on man animal conflict and its management and dr amit sinha sir assistant professor imce srmu on financial preparedness towards disasters in today's session uh, ms trinkla one of our student coordinator and the student of bba yes. will be assisting me for the conduction of the program may I, uh, please give me please allow me to uh, welcome and introduce Uh, uh, engineer avdesh kumar sir for uh, for for his uh, for, for his session ms shankla i would request ms shankla to please introduce uh, sir so that we can begin with the session hi yes shankla yes intelligent use of science and technology are the tools With which to achieve a new direction. With these powerful words, I would like to introduce civil engineer Avdesh Kumar Sir, assistant professor at Inverness University, Bareilly. He has worked on project of designing residential block with special reference to green building concept, enhancing properties of concrete in variable climate conditions, geopolymer. Lateral water harvesting plan in urban colonies, etc. So he is actively involved in the field of disaster management and currently working on hazard mapping of Rohilkhan region in UP, along with his role as an educator. He is also an assistant editor of Inverness University International Journal entitled Inverness Journal of Science and Technology. So he is life member of Indian Red Cross Society and actively involved in various social awareness program. Now I would like to ask sir to carry forward the session. Thank you, Shankla ma'am. And kindly 
tell me if it is visible on the screen yes sir it is okay okay thank you amit sir uh, a warm gratitude by my from my side to national institute of disaster management and srm university lucknow and all organizer and team so uh, before without before beginning this presentation i would like to uh, say one word that uh, uh, you this is going to be a homeopathic presentation ashish sir homeopathic mm -hmm. aur ramesh sir uh, jisko hum kehte hain homeopathic presentation ka matlab kya hai ki hum kya karte hain what usually we do hamare paas bimari hote hai uska dawa de di aur wo theek ho gayi but why these type of diseases are occurring so there are certain reason behind that so we are going to discuss the snt innovation for them also and this as science and technology innovation for drr jitne bhi log connected hain students faculties jitne bhi hamare participants hain bahar se all those people so ek english mein hamari jo saying hoti hai jisko kehte hain greek and latin to so, greek and latin ko hum kehte hain ki jo ki samajh mein na aaye to please is cheez se hame bachna hai we have to uh, save ourselves from this so whatever you are watching on the screen we focus on that and please provide your feedback in the chat box continuously during the presentation so that i can read and connect with all of you in a direct fashion because it's a online presentation not a physical one that's why we have to make some different kind of rule for a different type of understanding so this science and technology innovation of drr i would like to explain first of all the meaning of drr you are Uh, hearing the meaning uh, you are listening this drr term again and again so disaster risk reduction what is the meaning of disaster risk reduction in the very simple manner if i ask you uh, the chances uh, what would you like the chances of slip slipping from your staircase you want to uh, rise or low aap chances ko low karna chahenge ya badhana chahenge ek seedi se fisalne ko aap badhana chahenge ya ghatana chahenge to badhana hai to kele ke chhilke laiye aur dal dijiye uske upar और फिर चढ़ी है उसके ऊपर जिस बढ़ गया और अगर घटाना है तो आप उस तरीके के स्लीपर्स को पहनिए और उस तरीके के स्टेयर को डिजाइन करिए कि जिससे आपके स्लिप होने की पॉसिबिलिटी को जो है वो रिड्यूस हो जाए सो दिस इज ऑल अबाउट द रिस्क रिडक्शन एंड हेयर यू कैन सी इन द पिक्चर दिस इफ द विथ ऑफ द ट्रेंच इज हाई एंड दिस डेप्थ इज लो सो हाई प्रोबेबिलिटी बट लो रिस्क यानी कि इसमें गिरेगा भी तो कुछ होने वाला है नहीं अगर विथ कम है और डेप्थ भी कम है तो लो प्रोबेबिलिटी एंड लो इम्पैक्ट है यहां भी अगर गिर भी जाएंगे तो कुछ होगा नहीं बट सी दिस हाई इंपैक्ट सो हियर विथ दिस लो डेफिनेटली बट यू कैन सी सम रिस्क क्रिएटिंग क्रिएटिंग वी कैन से थिंग्स सो दिस इज इफ एनीवन फॉल इन दिस सो ऑब्वियसली प्रोबेबिलिटी इज लो टू फॉल डाउन इन दिस बट इंपैक्ट विल बी हाई एंड ऑन एक्सट्रीम सिचुएशन वी कैन सी इफ विथ इज हाई एंड आल्सो डेप्थ इज हाई and also we can see here this type of some uh, we can see this type of uh, structure if anyone fall in this then there is no chance to survive so there is a high probability as well as high high impact so this is all about the risk reduction so apne ko karna kya puri presentation mein jitni technology discuss hone wali hai whatever the technology we are discussing hum ek hi kaam pe focus hai ki humko ye sui yahan la ke rakhni hai low par probably ho sake to zero pe theek hai so yahan par high se low ki taraf jana hi hame सेव करता है डिजास्टर से यहाँ पर आगे चलते हैं तो यहाँ पर व्हेन आशीष सर वाज टेकिंग हिस्स प्रेजेंटेशन सो ही थ्रो लाइट ऑन सम वेरियस ग्लोबल एंड इंटरनेशनल एंड नेशनल डिजास्टर फ्रेमवर्क सो आई एम नॉट गोइंग टू डिस्कस दिस मंथ सो ही आल्सो टेल दैट सी आल्सो टेल अस दैट आउट ऑफ द सेवेंटीन एस डी जी आर फोकस ऑन डिजास्टर रिस्क रिडक्शन सो हेयर ग्लोबल डिजास्टर रेजिलियन फ्रेमवर्क वी हैव सो वन इज टू थाउजेंड टू फिफ्टीन so 5 to 15 was a hago framework of action and 15 to 30 2015 to 30 that is currently running so ye aise prayas hain jiske duniya chal rahi hai ki hum disaster ko kisi tarike se kam kar sake duniya bhar mein yahan par main sendai framework ko thoda sa explain karna chahunga because program because this presentation is going to uh, going to uh, uh, take a overview of snt so this uh, sendai framework clearly spelled the need of multiple science and technology discipline to be on board in the framework of disaster risk management of all the countries now this you can see prime minister 10 point agenda so time this uh, is an agenda that was uh, provided by honorable prime minister so his fifth point is also elevating the leverage of technology to enhance the energy 
efficiency of disaster risk management effort so this was an agenda on which india is trying to fulfill the global framework for disaster risk reduction and this point number 5 that i uh, tell you that uh, this is about the leverage of science and technology in disaster risk reduction so it uh, it uh, it suggests uh, to implement the early warning system that can enhance the efficiency of disaster risk management as since the technology play a crucial role we have here various technology like the satellite based geographical information system and computer simulation etc disaster mapping vulnerability assessment disaster response these all are the part of this and item number 5 further explain this uh, is dedicated india disaster response network that is a nationwide electronic inventory of specialists and essential resources for disaster response sabse badi baat hai ki agar disaster hoge to aap resources kahan se laoge to iske liye humne ek डिजिटल रिपोजिटरी को बना रखा है तो यहाँ पर ये ये भी एक टेक्नोलॉजी के किस तरीके से मैनेजमेंट और किस तरीके से इम्प्लीमेंटेशन हो रहा है पॉइंट नंबर फाइव के अंदर एक्सप्लेन है आगे यहाँ पर ये पॉइंट काफी बड़ा है लेकिन मैं यहाँ पर एक चीज बताना चाहूंगा जो छोटे में डिस्कस करना चाहता हूँ सो टेक्नोलॉजी नॉट मीन्स बिग बिग सुपर कंप्यूटर बिग बिग टाइप ऑफ लेबोरेटरीज राइट पीपल इन दॉन सो दिस इज ऑल्सो लाइज इन दीनियस इन इन द इंडिजीनियस फॉर्म so all the technology that exists in the form of the indigenous knowledge among the co- among the community this is also the part of technology so this is all about the item number 5 of prime minister 10 point agenda now hum bol rahe hain ki covid hai ya covid ki wajah se 29% economy chali gayi jaw drop so i would like to say unfortunately this is nothing real डेंजर जैसे मैंने कहा था कि होम्योपैथिक प्रेजेंटेशन है तो हमारे हम केवल कॉजेस को देख रहे हैं हम अभी बीमारी देख रहे हैं कि कोविड नाइन्टीन एक बीमारी है महामारी है लेकिन इसके पीछे से कॉजेस बहुत गहरे हैं और असली क्लाइमेट जो जो क्लाइमेट चेंज है ये जितनी डिजास्टर को आगे लेके आने वाली है और जिस तरीके से लार भी रही है तो अभी आशिक सर ने भी जैसे बताया कि यहाँ पे और अमित सर भी डिस्कस कर रहे थे कि किस तरीके से ये फ्रिक्वेंसी बढ़ती जा रही है वे ऑफ बंगाल अरेबियन सी ये तो एग्जाम्पल है पूरी दुनिया में बहुत सारे जोन से ऐसे so this is going to be real problem climate change in the future so this is cannot be solved with the washing hands and this is cannot merely going to solve with the adopting some covid 19 uh, covid 19 uh, abatement strategies we have to prepare for climate change and uh, climate change based disasters is efficient uh, efficient planning for that also so for this if you see the scenario of india so 6 meter rise will rise, will result into the rise of this type of uh, uh, situation in india so you can see this water is going to uh, inundate the coastal boundary that is approximately 7560 km so this is going to be a disaster situation for the coastal areas and next for counter this india also launched a national action plan of cli- plan of climate change so it has eight submissions so these in these sub all the eight submissions science and technology is a, going to play a very vital role you can see this responsible entity where you can see ministry of new and renewable energy ministry of power ministry of urban and here you can see ministry of science and technology ministry of science and technology again so this is something that indicating directly the importance of science and technology in uh, disaster management and climate change so now coming uh, on this situation what the global reports are saying so this is unicef uh, uh, report 1995 2015 the human cost of weather related disaster so they have observed that in last 20 year the overwhelming majority of disaster approximate 90% these had been caused by floods storm drought heat waves and other weather related events so obviously we have to focus much on that and if we see india so you can see this picture this is the situation this is a, itself a disaster you could not need to d- read this text don't worry about that text okay so see this picture this is itself a disaster so here niti ayo of uh, the, the the elite planning body of india so this uh, it's saying that 21 indian cities is going to run out of the water by next year so including the capital capital uh, the uh, capital in new delhi so uh, this is going to uh, present a serial serious picture so critical ground water resources which are accounted 40% of india's water supply are being depleted at an unsustainable rate up to 70% of india's water supply of supply is continued so jis desh ki 70% water supply ko agar uski desh ki planning body cement keh rahi hai ki contaminated ke kareeb mein hai to aap samajhiye ki jo pani hai wo basic needs mein aata hai 
तो कितने बड़े पैमाने पे पैंडेमिक और आप क्या समझते कितने बड़े पैमाने पे आप जो एपेडेमिक्स है उनको रोक सकेंगे सो दिस इज इट सेल्फ ए सिचुएशन सो नाउ इफ यू सी द जेंडर एस्पेक्ट यू नो जो रूरल एरियाज हैं आज भी उसमें जो पानी का जो मेन प्रॉब्लम होता है वो मेल्स को इतना नहीं होता बट फीमेल्स से उसका असर ज्यादा पड़ता है और मैं केवल यहाँ भारत की बात नहीं करूंगा आई एम नॉट गोइंग टू टॉक ओनली फॉर इंडिया सो यू कैन सी मोर देन टू बिलियन पीपल्स आर कंप्लाइड टू ड्रिंक कंटामिनेटेड वाटर टू बिलियन इट्स अ ब्रिक फिगर सो रिजल्टिंग इन अ चाइल्ड डाइंग एवरी मिनट ऑफ एवरी आवर ऑफ एवरी डे सो यू आई वॉज टॉकिंग अबाउट द टू मिनट्स अबाउट द गुजरात आई वॉज टेकिंग द रेफरेंस ऑफ गुजरात अर्थ क्विक सी दिस डेटा वट दिस सेंग डेट दिस इज डब्ल्यू एच जे एम पी यूनिसेफ डेटा सो दिस इज द सीरियस पिक्चर फोर पॉइंट फाइव बिलियन पीपल लैक सेफली मैनेज सैनिटाइशन सर्विसेस सो फॉर दैट आई से दैट दिस इज वी हैव टू get insight from our inside indigenous knowledge so this is something i am not going to discuss the water harvesting because this is a general issue there is no meaning to discuss everyone know about the water harvesting rainfall water shed on the buildings and we can capture it so here are some hidden our indigenous forgotten knowledge so this is madkas jodas pemgar you can see this in pa- karnataka pemgara in odisha jodas in rajasthan so these are some uh, repository uh, uh, sub, sub uh, some techniques by which we can conserve water into these regions and we can uh, take the help of these indigenous technologies uh, an indigenous knowledge that is available to the communities as well so uh, to uh, uh, raise the water table in that area so bavdi jhala you can see this in picture here it is another issue bamboo drip irrigation this is functional in the northeastern state of india so there you can see the water can be transferred from one place to another with the help of bamboo tree this so this is an another uh, uh, example of that so joy pumps you can see these children uh, are sitting and enjoying a uh, jisko hum kehte hain jhula jhul rahe hain ye log to jab ye jhula jhulte hain to pani ko isme automatically tank mein store kiya ja sakta so this is some uh, indigenous one now uh, cycle run so here you can see in this picture uh, uh, this is cycle run water pumps where there is no electricity needed so there they can also take the measure to conserve the water and this you can see the water wheel is a very popular thing now in the villages of rajasthan so is ke piche badi strange story hai ki yahan par jo hai ek ek jo the log the unhone isko dekha ki kaise log matke leke ja rahe hain pani bharne ke liye rajasthan ki story hai aap sabko pata hogi to usme pani ki badi killat rehti hai us state ke andar to yahan par usne ek water wheel ko banaya jiske zara aaram se pani ko leke ja sakte hain to ye 10 se 15 50 liter tak pani हाइजीनिक कंडीशन में लेकर आया जा सकता है दिस इज समथिंग दैट नीड्स टू बी अंडरस्टैंड इट प्रेजेंट सिचुएशन ऑफ वाटर क्राइसिस रेन वाटर सिरेंजस यू कैन सी दिस इज सिरेंजस दैट चार्जिंग द रेन वाटर जट चार्जिंग द ग्राउंड वाटर लेवल यू कैन सी दिस कट्टा एंड यस्टरडे प्रोफेसर चंदन घोष सर आल्सो डिस्कस दिस फॉर द फ्लड वॉल्स कॉन्सेप्ट सो देयर दे आर आल्सो यूजफुल इन स्टोरिंग वाटर फ्रेश एंड आल्सो टू Uh, make a barrier uh, between the fresh water and saline water if uh, if uh, if there is some uh, site situation exists there now this is some uh, another thing that is wetland conservation wetland is something abhi kabhi kahin kahin land hoti hai kahin kahin par pani hota hai kahin kahin beech ki zameen hoti hai to wetland aisi ek daldali zameen ho gayi to yahan par ek aisa ecosystem paya jata hai jo kahin shayad aapko dekhne ko milega yahan par transition hai ek tarike se land aur aapka aquatic ka so this is a transition zone that's why the biodiversity that is wetland biodiversity is very important to conserve for that we are using the drones and mobile land you can see this uh, students or researcher they can take a look of all the area in a very short time and capture a lot of information without going into this wetland site and this is an application based and this wetland of uh, wetland uh, for maharashtra government recently also launched a application for that and this you can see this floating treatment on uh, uh, the site there you can see this bio treatment is helpful in rejuvenating the site that are contaminated water so this is a very cost efficient technology and you can see wetland mapping you can see with the help of geographical information system and remote sensing technologies we can deploy here so we can take the decision amit sir you all always discuss about the issues of uh, lucknow the coral so this type of technologies are also applicable Uh, in that uh, in that uh, 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 locations also so indigenous technology so one second hello so this you can see the people who are who are who, who are living in in the vicinity of these areas 
usually when the when the people take decision to conserve any land they say they evacuate evacuate this this land so this is not the justice so indigenous technology to support the wetland villages is also important so we are uh, developing that technology here where the manure and you know urine as well they are using as a uh, for uh, for creating the fertilizers and uh, uh, support them economically uh, uh, as well this indigenous population that is residing in this wetland villages now you can see thodi presentation boring ho gayi to aap ye dekhiye isko ki kahin kahin hota hai ki safety night par hi award aisa milta hai ki wo mic mein ulajh ke gir gaye to ye safety night award mil raha tha to kahin hamare sath bhi kuch aisa ho raha hai to ye award pada hua hai hum pade hue hain hamari jo hai bade bade sammelan hai ye ek presentation hai तो यहाँ हमारे साथ भी कुछ ऐसा है कि हम अपनी डिजास्टर से सीखते नहीं है इसके लिए प्राइम मिनिस्टर टेन पॉइंट एजेंडा में पॉइंट नंबर नाइन को डाला गया जिसका कहना है कि आप केवल आप जो है डिजास्टर से सीखिए ताकि दोबारा जब वो आए तो वही गलती ना करें तो यहाँ पर एक एक्सेलेंट उदाहरण मैं देना चाहूंगा आपको तो दिस इज फ्रॉम द एविएशन इंस्ट्रक्शन इंडस्ट्री यू नो दैट इन नाइनटीन जीरो थ्री आफ्टर द आफ्टर द इनोवेशन ऑफ एयरप्लेन ए नंबर ऑफ प्रॉब्लम ऑल्सो फेस दिस और टेक्नोलॉजिकल इन नेचर Average life of a pilot was very less in the air that time. So faulty design, faulty maintenance, manufacturing flaws, pilot error, weather condition. These were some reasons behind that. And you can see, one very interesting thing is this bullet hole data. I will explain to you. So this survivor bias, this is called survivor bias. Now, how does it happen? In front of me, I have shown that there is a safety night award. And in the safety night award, there is a bullet hole data. So it is a big thing. So here, you have the bullet hole data. And I am asking you a general question. Don't read this text now. जनरल क्वेश्चन ये है कि आप यहाँ पर ये जो है ये कम से कम सौ प्लेन जो कि लौट कर आए थे एयरफील्ड पर वर्ल्ड वार टू के दौरान उन पर फायरिंग हुई थी ये एयरफील्ड पर लौट के आए थे यहाँ पर ये बुलेट फायर हुई थी उन्होंने कंबाइंड डाटा बनाया तो यहाँ पर हमें ये बुलेट होल्स मिले तो अब पूछा जाए कि यहाँ पर आर्मर कहाँ लगेगा यानी कि अब हम इस एयरप्लेन के डिजाइन को कैसे बेहतर बनाए मैकेनिकल वाले जल्दी अच्छे से समझेंगे बाकी के लोगों को भी जनरली मैं बता रहा हूँ कि यहाँ पर आप कहाँ पर इसकी बॉडी को स्ट्रॉन्ग करेंगे तो जहर सी बात है सारे लोग आंसर करेंगे कि जहाँ पर बुलेट के होल हैं वहाँ पर ही आर्मर को लगा दिया जाए तो यानी यहाँ 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 अब एयरप्लेन ज़्यादा सेफ हो गया तो ये प्लेन जब जाएगा युद्ध में तो बहुत आराम से ये सर्वाइव करेगा इसका रिस्क रिड्यूस हो गया है ठीक है तो यही आंसर दिया गया एक्सपर्ट्स के द्वारा बिल्कुल सेम बट हुआ यह सर्वाइवर बायस नाम के एक एरर को एक स्टेटिशियन थे उन्होंने फाइंड आउट किया तो ये सर्वाइवर बायस होता क्या कि सामने कोई चीज हो और गलती हो जाए तो सर्वाइवर सर्वाइवर बायस इज इज वन व्हेन वन इज लुक एट द डाटा ऑफ दोट हु सक्सीड एंड एक्सक्लूड दोज हु फोल्ड यानी सिर्फ आप उस डाटा को देखें जो सक्सेसफुल हो गए उन डाटा को आप छोड़ दीजिए जो डाटा अनसक्सेस हो गए यानी कि जे जो आप लोगों ने बनाए जो जो इन लोगों ने बनाया था ये डायग्राम ये एक्चुअली उन प्लेन्स का बना पाए थे वो लोग जो एयरफील्ड पे वापस लौट के आ गए थे उन प्लेन्स का डाटा ही नहीं था जो कि युद्ध में गिरा दिए गए थे इसका मतलब वहाँ बुलेट वहाँ बुलेट यहाँ फायर नहीं हुई थी वो बुलेट फायर हुई थी इस जोन पे जहाँ कोई भी बुलेट का होल नहीं है क्योंकि जब यहाँ लगी तो प्लेन सरवाइव कर गया था लेकिन जो रीजन बिल्कुल ब्लैंक पड़ा हुआ है यहाँ जहाँ जहाँ बुलेट लगी वो कभी भी एयरफील्ड पे लौटे नहीं प्लेन तो दिस वॉर द सर्वाइवर बायस सो यहाँ पर सामने होते होते गलती होती तो ही सेट दैट जेंटलमैन यू न्यूड टू पुट मोर आर्मर प्लेट वेयर द होल्स आर नॉट बिकॉज दैट्स वेयर द होल्स वर ऑन द एयरप्लेन दैट डिड नॉट रिटर्न तो दिस वॉर फेमस स्टडी अब्राउंड वर्ल्ड 1942 होप यू अंडरस्टैंड तो यहाँ पर एक हम देख सकते हैं कितनी बुरी तरह से गलती हो सकती है और हम उस गलती को कंटिन्यू कर सकते हैं क्योंकि आगे के जितनी डिजाइन होती फिर ऐसे ही होती और वो सारे प्लेन गिरते सो दिस एनालिसिस और लर्निंग फ्रॉम द डिजास्टर इज रियली वेरी इंपॉर्टेंट एंड आफ्टर लर्निंग दिस दिस इन कंटिन्यूशन ऑफ लर्निंग फ्रॉम एविएशन डिजास्टर वी क्रिएटेड दिस बैक ब्लैक बॉक्स सो दिस ब्लैक बॉक्स हैव नो यूज इन द एयरप्लेन दे आर नॉट गोइंग टू सेव एनी एयरक्राफ्ट बट एट द टाइम ऑफ एक्सीडेंट दे आर गोइंग टू रिकॉर्ड द डाटा एट द टाइम ऑफ एक्सीडेंट लाइक दिस सो हेयर यू कैन सी द वॉइस पैटर्न एक्सीडेंट के टाइम पे जैसे ही आवाजें हो रही थी कॉकपिट पे जैसे पायलट का पैनिक लेवल था उसको देख के हमने डिसीजन लिए कि अब क्या बेहतर करना चाहिए तो वो सीखते 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 अभी एविएशन का ये सीन हो गया है कि आप देखिए यहाँ पर 2018 है और यहाँ 1950s है तब से लेके ट्रेन घटते घटते एयरप्लेन एक्सीडेंट 1950s से और एटीन के बीच कितना घट गया सो दिस इज कॉल्ड द रियल एग्जांपल ऑफ लर्निंग फ्रॉम डिजास्टर एंड इम्प्लीमेंटेड इनटू योर प्लानिंग इन इन टू फ्यूचर प्लानिंग इन ऑन दिस सेम लाइन वी क्रिएटेड मोटर व्हीकल इवेंट डाटा रिकॉर्डर सो दिस इज ऑल्सो गोइंग टू सर्व फॉर द सेम जो जो काम यहाँ प्लेन में होता था ये कार में होगा तो यहाँ पर स्पीड एक्सलेशन सडन टर्न ब्रेकिंग अदर इम्पॉर्टेंट ये आपको बचाएगा नहीं किसी को बचाएगा नहीं लेकिन ये रिकॉर्ड करेगा ताकि फ्यूचर कार डिजाइन के लिए हमको मेहनत मदद मिले सो दिस इज 
some prediction. Now, uh, some things that's flood prediction uh, type of the future prediction of technology and AI based DRBMS, DBMS, sorry, database management system. So artificial intelligence तो बहुत ज्यादा मदद कर रही है चाहे फॉरेस्ट फायर जो जितने भी हैं कि हमारे वहां इंटर ह्यूमन इंटरवेंशन कम से कम होते जा रहे हैं तो यहाँ पर प्रॉन्ट रिस्पॉन्स पॉसिबल हो गए तो यहाँ फ्लड प्रोडक्शन में देखिए कि ये 10 से 12 आवर के विंडो में अपने आप एक फ्लड प्रोडक्शन का डाटा जनरेट कर देता है ये सॉफ्टवेयर अपने आप तो जिससे कि जितने भी एजेंसी स्टेक होल्डर्स हैं वो सारे अलर्ट हो जाते हैं फिर हम देखते हैं दिस यू कैन सी दाइल्ड लाइफ प्रोडक्शन सो वाइल्ड लाइफ इज अनदर ग्रेट प्रॉब्लम सो वाइल्ड लाइफ प्रोडक्शन के लिए भी दिस इज द कंप्यूटर मॉडल सो दिस इज इशू एंड अपडेट फॉर द अपडेट फॉरकास्ट to the people who are really responsible for that now there you can see i am belong from the civil engineering and uh, uh, i was told that there are many student from the civil engineering so infrastructure investment on the infrastructure introducing the risk is really important so this is coalition for disaster resilient infrastructure this is launched by india in 2019 un climate asian action summit in new york uh, so this is something that tell us about the coalition they make a coalition of the countries for investment in the for the resilient infrastructure so india is the leader in uh, india it is launched by india so it is a, le a leading country in this so here you can see this point thematic area so innovation in emerging technology uh, emerging uh, innovation and emerging technology so this is also telling you the same like the prime minister 10 point jarga like the sendai firm same thing the cdr is also advocating the same that innovation emerging technology is really important for that if if we see the city management or the building uh, area so we need the smart energy solution smart street and public services smart mobility smart water smart buildings so in continuation we have to uh, uh, travel toward these uh, solution ab ek badi khatarnak cheez hai urban heat heat island effect paida ho rahe hain kyunki shahar badhte ja rahe hain तो बिग सिटीज जो है इंडिया की बहुत ज्यादा गर्म होती जा रही है तो यहाँ आपको एक चीज दिखाता हूँ ये रिसर्च आई आई खड़गपुर का है तो आई खड़गपुर के जो जो रिसर्चर उन्होंने कहा कि अर्बन हीट आइडलैंड जो है दिन में तो तापमान बढ़ ही रहा है रात में भी बढ़ रहा है बल्कि रात में ठंडा होता है तो रात में भी इन एरिया में तापमान ठंडा नहीं हो रहा तो दिस इज ए सिचुएशन ये कहाँ से ठंडा होगा आप देखिए गाड़ियों की कतार है यहाँ पर बिल्डिंग्स है तो पूरी की पूरी आप समझ लीजिए बढ़ती भरी दूर में कोई धूप में कोई छाता लेके निकल जाए और कोई बिना छाते के निकल जाए तो धूप किससे ज्यादा लगेगी तो ये ऐसी जगह है जहाँ पर कोई छाता नहीं है ठीक है तो यहाँ पर अब सिविल इंजीनियरिंग के एस्पेक्ट को डिस्कस करें अगर बाबा तो बहुत ज्यादा एस्पेक्ट है सिविल इंजीनियरिंग अपने आप में वैसे बहुत वाइड है और डिजास्टर मैनेजमेंट के साथ अगर इसका फ्यूजन हो जाता तो या और ज्यादा इसके एप्लीकेशन सामने आते हैं सो डिजास्टर रिस्क रिडक्शन में यू नो दिस इज रिस्क मैनेजमेंट पॉपुलेशन पब्लिक पॉलिसी जियोलॉजी जियोग्राफी जियोमेट्रिक्स सिविल इंजीनियरिंग तो यहाँ पर जो सिविल इंजीनियर का एक्सपेक्ट है यहाँ पर चाइना की दीवार देख रहे होंगे मैं बहुत छोटे एग्जाम्पल इसलिए उठा रहा हूँ ताकि आपको सीधा पहले समझ में आए रिस्क रिडक्शन की डिटेल्स आप कहीं से भी लिख सकते हैं इंटरनेट पे बहुत पड़ी हुई है यहाँ पर सिविल इंजीनियर का एस्पेक्ट देखिए चाइना की वॉल को बनाया क्यों गया था विदेशी आक्रमणकारियों से सुरक्षा के लिए रिस्क रिडक्शन के लिए डिजास्टर ना हो सबोटेज ना हो उन जगहों पे इसलिए सो दिस इज ऑल्सो ए स्ट्रक्चर दैट वॉज डेडिकेटेड टूवर्ड दैट एट दैट टाइम सो नाउ आई एम शोइंग फॉर यू फॉर यू इमरजेंसी सपोर्ट फैक्टर डिजास्टर मैनेजमेंट का बहुत प्रमुख हिस्सा चौदह हमारे ऐसे हिस्से हैं जिनको एक्टिवेट होना बहुत जरूरी होता है किसी भी डिजास्टर के अंदर यानी कम्युनिकेशन पहली और एक कमेटी की रिपोर्ट के अनुसार अगर कम्युनिकेशन फेल होता है आपका तो समझ लीजिए आपने दो चार और इनविटेशन कार्ड छाप के भेज दिए डिजास्टर को क्योंकि अगर आपका कम्युनिकेशन फेल हुआ है मान लीजिए आप किसी सिटी में मैं बरेली से हूँ और मैं तमिलनाडु चला जाता हूँ मैं तमिलनाडु में खो जाता हूँ तो सबसे पहले मेरे पास प्रॉब्लम आएगी मैं कम्युनिकेट किससे करूँगा ऐसे डिजास्टर में सिचुएशन आती है अगर कोई डिजास्टर में हो तो वो किससे कम्युनिकेट करेंगे कम्युनिकेशन डिस्क्रिप्शन हो जाता है इससे और बड़े डिजास्टर हो जाती हैं सो पब्लिक हेल्थ सैनिटेशन पावर ट्रांसपोर्ट सर्च सो दिस ऑल द एस्पेक्ट्स आर द कोर एरिया ऑफ सिविल इंजीनियरिंग पब्लिक हेल्थ इंजीनियरिंग इफ यू रिमेम्बर कम्युनिकेशन इरेक्टिंग द कम्युनिकेशन टावर्स राइट सो दिस इज समथिंग दैट इज वेरी मच ट्रांसपोर्टेशन इज ए स्पेशलाइज एरिया ट्रांसपोर्टेशन इंजीनियर इज देयर राइट सो दिस आर सम स्पेशलाइज एरिया ऑफ अबाउट दैट सो हेयर we have the sub sustainable solution for our building because a robust structure reduces the chances of failing it so for that we have this bio concrete or self healing concrete where cracks are going to automatically heal it heal themselves now these are some miscellaneous application photovoltaic they are these are the uh, buildings that are popular now uh, getting popularizing in the european countries where they can generate their own electricity with the help of the photovoltaic effect kinetic portfolio they are using the piezoelectric sensors piezoelectric sensors are capable of generating the electricity when they compress 
सो दिस इज काइनेटिक फुटबॉल ऑन द सेम प्रिंसिपल काइनेटिक रोड्स आर देयर जब गाड़ी चलेगी तो बिजली पैदा करेंगे ये स्ट्रीट लाइट जल जाएंगी इनसे एसेट मैपिंग हमारे पास कौन सा क्रिटिकल स्ट्रक्चर कहाँ पर है एसेट मैपिंग बहुत इंपॉर्टेंट है कि हम कितनी देर में वहाँ पहुँच सकते हैं सो दिस इज समथिंग और अभी थोड़ा मैकेनिकल का मैं अगर इन्वॉल्व करूँ या एग्रीकल्चर का इन्वॉल्व करूँ तो दिस इलेक्ट्रिकल व्हीकल इलेक्ट्रॉनिक्स इलेक्ट्रिकल व्हीकल्स की टेक्नोलॉजी आ रही है आपने टेस्ला सुना होगा बहुत सारी कार सुनी हो ये क्या है कि हमारे डीजल पे डिपेंडेंसी पेट्रोल कन्वेंशनल पेट्रोल पे या कार्बन इमिशन को घटाने के लिए है बायो फ्यूल्स सो दिस इज ऑल्सो गोइंग टू प्रोवाइड अ सस्टेनेबल सोल्यूशन नाउ अर्थ क्विक रेजिस्टेंट बिल्डिंग्स स्पेशलाइज एरिया ऑफ सिविल इंजीनियरिंग फिर वी कै वी हैव टू गो फॉर डिफरेंट डिफरेंट टेक्निक्स वी हैव वेरियस टेक्नोलॉजी ए डेडिकेटेड सिविल इंजीनियरिंग कोड इज ऑल्सो दे आर approved by bureau of indian standard we all know that so cross basing shear walls shear core moat we have base isolation method so these are some techniques where various guidelines you will find in those that code uh, unfortunately the the, the, uh, the earthquake retrofitting condition in india is very poor because of its poor implementability and uh, its pop its less popularity among the common masses so this are uh, another areas reduction protection uh, reduction, reduction method engineering way so now we can see in the same line high wind and hurricane high building and hurricane resistant building yahan shape uski sustainability engineering material excellence or connections ko it as the kiya jata hai ki aerodynamic ek tarike se ki isme hawa zyada impact na kare aapki right wind load agar kisi bhi cheez ko uda deta hai to usko hum aise banate hain ki ye aisa na kar pae ki hamari jo jitni bhi hai jo body hai wo ek bluff body na ban jaye ek streamline body bani rahe तो स्ट्रीम लाइन अगर होगी तो आप देखिए कार के हिस्से के जो आगे पे जो पतले होते हैं उससे क्या होता है अगर वो ना हो तो हमारे जितना भी थ्रस्ट आएगा बहुत ज्यादा आएगा एयर का तो इस तरीके से इनको डेवलप करते हैं हम यहाँ पर ब्लास्ट रेजिस्टेंट अब नई प्रॉब्लम हो गई आप देख लेंगे रिसेंटली वी आर ऑल्सो डिस्कसिंग सम इसराइल इशूज और नंबर ऑफ बिल्डिंग कोलेप्सेस यू हैव सीन इन द पिक्चर्स और द वीडियोज सो बिल्डिंग देखिए कैसे गिरती है और यहाँ पर तो ये बल्टे टेंसर का आपने देखा ही था प्लेन से अटैक किया गया था मुंबई इंडिया का तो ये सारी भी एक समस्या है ये भी बड़े एक प्रॉब्लम है तो इनके लिए ब्लास्ट रेजिस्टेंट बिल्डिंग डिजाइन है यहाँ पर आप यू कैन सी दिस बिल्डिंग डिजाइन क्राइटेरिया फॉर ब्लास्ट रेजिस्टेंट डिजाइन ऑफ स्ट्रक्चर फॉर एक्सप्लोजन अब ग्राउंड अनफॉर्चुनेटली मोस्ट ऑफ द सिविल इंजीनियरिंग स्टूडेंट नॉट नो अबाउट देर इज देर इज क्राइटेरिया ऑल्सो एक्सिस्ट फॉर ब्लास्ट रेजिस्टेंट डिजाइन एज वेल सो दिस इज समथिंग वी हैव द प्रोविजन ऑफ ऑल बट वी हैव टू गो फॉर द इम्प्लीमेंटेशन लेवल सो दिस वट दिस बिल्डिंग थी सो दे एब्जॉर्व दिस ब्लास्ट एनर्जी एंड एक्ट इन ए मोर robust manner now urban heat island effect that i discussed the report of iit kharagpur you can see this picture so wherever you were are seeing the concrete jungle there is a rising temperature you can observe here so this is something uh, when if you are living here so obviously the temperature is going to high here if you are living near farm so aap kehte nahi ki gaon ki taraf aa gaya to bahut thanda ho gaya to wo iska yahi ar uhi ka effect hai to yahan par to mitigate this effect we have some planning method so albedo mitigation aise material ko use na kare jo bahut absorb kar le cooling roofing green roofing ki use karte hain vegetation mitigation hamara jo vegetation agar hum plant kar de to wo bhi bahut acche se jo dhoop hai aur uski jo energy hai usko jo hai reflect back nahi hone deti hai aur hamara jo hai usko bahut excellent insulator bana deti hai opaque vented walls inko banate hain wind circulation ko acha rakha jata hai to अगर हम देखा जाए तो मैं इतनी देर से जो बात कर रहा हूँ सस्टेनेबल बिल्डिंग की तो वो ग्रीन बिल्डिंग की कहीं ना कहीं बात कर रहा हूँ कि ग्रीन रूफिंग या देखिए रूफ पर ग्रीन ग्रीनरी लगी हुई तो ग्रीन रूफिंग ये है पर वेजिटेशन यहाँ पर सो दिस इज नॉट गोइंग टू सर्व एज ए यू एच आई यू नो दिस इज ऑटोमेटिकली गोइंग सो फॉर दैट वी हैव द स्टैंडर्ड दैट इज अ लीड आई जी बी सी ग्रीहा सो दे प्रोवाइड द रेटिंग ऑन द बेसिस ऑफ द बिल्डिंग परफॉर्मेंस टू वर्ड द सनसेबिलिटी सो दिस इज ऑल्सो ए प्रोविजन इन द सिविल इंजीनियरिंग नाउ नेक्स्ट वी कैन सी दिस uh data that built environment green building it, if see see this 1.2 billion square feet buildings are under construction pre certified by igbc so igbc is a agency that certified the building so this much area is uh, certified by that so there are various benefit i am not going into this deeper data so benefit of 1 billion square feet green building is you can understand 12 million ton reduction of carbon dioxide emission this is a great and 15000 gigawatt energy saving this is another one so 45 million liters water saving so this is some benefit if we plan if we make 1 billion square feet green buildings in our country 
so or global level we can also impair it because this is not the national concept this is also coming from the international level like usgg united states green building concept so it's is something that needs to be implemented here you can see the picture of green parking green parking so here you can see this uh, one central park sydney example from sydney and italy so there you are go for uh, this vertical type of gardening or uh, this is a picture from abu dhabi oasis system they are installed with such system that are capable of generate electricity with the help of photoelectric effect and also installed uh, the, the sprinkler also installed here so they are very extremely beneficial in that situation hello yes sir okay so by the way they are very beautiful uh, as well so they are they have extremely beautiful uh, structure so you can see this top view of this so uh, they are uh, they are also the method to achieve this so vertical farming you can see here so vertical farming is a concept where we are not horizontally forming the crops so they are going to uh, give you the maximum crop yield reduces transportation cost use minimal water they are going to use lesser space for crops seedi ki tarah ek se upar ek tree ki tarah lagte chale jate hain aur uske upar jo hai hamari jitni bhi plantation hai wo unko laga diya jata hai to ek pani bhi use isme bada efficiently hota hai aur bahut kam sthan ghera jata hai ye dekh lijiye aap example isme ek hi jagah par kitne sare trees type ki hain ye aur yahan par kitne sare humne vegetation ko laga rakha so they are getting less space and providing more productivity so this you can see civil engineering but another neglect neglect uh, another area that uh, face huge negligence and it is animals hum sari insano ki baatein kar lete hain hum sab kuch baat kar lete hain lekin kya animals par bhi impact hota hai kya in structures ka do they also suffer so yes they also suffer you can see this data linear infrastructure linear infrastructure ka matlab aap ko batata hu ki all railway road line uh, road network are known as the linear infrastructures so ns67 passing from six corridor in the vidarbha region ns37 from kaziranga national park so yeah, these are roads passing from there or as a result a number of death uh, are lot 1987 to 2000 more than 200 element deaths were documented during 16 to 18 due to due to rail accident 49 elephant died 11 tigers and 13 deaths so this is also going to taken into account so for that we have created land bridges you can see this connect these two to to green boundaries and here you can see uttarakhand gets its first eco bridge for small animals this is also one you can see this canopy bridges ek ped se dusra ped connect hai glider bridge yahan par jo chidiyan hain ya jo pakshi hain wo move kar sakte hain is tarike se bina takraye gaadiyon se yahan par pipe culverts bani hui hain yahan par se janwar jo hain wo pass hote hain aur ye dekhiye ek मॉडिफाइड कलवर्ड विद फर्नीचर यहाँ पर एक जो लगाया गया है कि स्ट्रक्चर इस तरीके से बनाया गया तो इस पर ये लोग जाते हैं तो ये ऊपर से क्रॉस नहीं करते नीचे से जाना आसान होता है तो इस तरह से फिश पासेज है फिश पासेज दिए जाते हैं फेंसेस आप देखिए ये ये जो कछुए हैं ये इधर ना निकले तो इसके लिए एक फिश हम लोगों ने फेंसेस बना दिए तो दिस इज सम फैसिलिटीज प्रोवाइडेड टू दॉर रिड्यूसिंग एनिमल रिडक्शन एंड मोर इन मोर टेक्नोलॉजी वी हैव लीडार सो दे कैन सो वी कैन हैव ए थ्री इमेज ऑफ द एरिया so this you can see camera traps to ye bilkul ped ki tarah lagte hain inko pehchanna bada mushkil hota hai to yahan par jo janwar hote hain unko monitor kiya jata hai assam se to sir inse yahan par jo poachers hote hain jo poaching activity karte hain unko bhi hum log dekh sakte hain to yahan par iske baad uh, acoustics monitoring ki hum log dekhe acoustic monitoring yahan ki awaazein sun ke hum jaan sakte hain ki wahan par kis tarike ki situation hai to wahan par species ki occupancy ki hai abundance population density kya hai community composition kya hai ye sab pata lagta hai to yahan par aise hi airborne हमारे पास एयरबोन लडार मैपिंग का एक टेक्निक है तो ये भी हमारा जो है लडार कितना है इस तरह से हम लोग इमेज क्रिएट कर लेते हैं थ्री सो वी कैन चेक द एरिया दैट इज सफरिंग फ्रॉम एनी पार्टिकुलर लाइक बुश फायर एक्सेट्रा सो डिजास्टर मैपिंग इज एक्सट्रीमली इम्पॉर्टेंट वी यूज द रोबोट वी टेक द मैप फ्रॉम द इनडेटेड जोन सो दिस रोबोट इज वेरी यूजफुल बिकॉज देर आर सर्जन प्रेजेंट इन द फॉरेस्ट वेर ह्यूमन मूवमेंट इज नॉट पॉसिबल हेयर यू कैन सी दम हीट सिग्नेचर सो जी थर्मल इमेजिंग कैमरा हेयर वी कैन ये एक जगह है जहाँ पर ऑस्ट्रेलिया में बुश फायर हुई थी तो यहाँ पर एक कोआला नाम का एक जानवर बैठा है इनके फिंगरप्रिंट बिल्कुल हमारी तरह होते हैं अगर ये कहीं उंगली रख दें तो बिल्कुल पहचानना मुश्किल है 
कि इंसान के है या कोला के फिंगर प्रिंट है तो लेकिन बड़े स्लो मूविंग माने जाते हैं तो ये इनको बड़ा नुकसान पहुंचा था ऑस्ट्रेलियन बुश फायर के दौरान तो ऑस्ट्रेलियन बुश फायर के दौरान इनको रेस्क्यू किया करने के लिए हीट सिग्नेचर्स यूज़ किया गया ये देखिए ड्रोन्स यूज़ किया गया था यहाँ की मॉनिटरिंग हो रही थी मॉनिटरिंग के बाद इनका जो एरिया जल गया था जहाँ से खाना खत्म हो गया था उसको भी हमने कैप्चर किया था और उनको आइडेंटिफाई किया था कहाँ और हो सकते हैं सो फॉर इन द सिमिलर ऑर्डर यू कैन सी दिस यू कैन ट्रैक कोला जब ये अपने झुंड में वापस जाएगा तो हमें बाकी के लोकेशन भी पता चलेगी सो दिस सम टेक्नोलॉजी दैट यूज यूज दैट आर पॉपुलर इन एनिमल इनक्लूज इन डिजास्टर दिस प्रोडक्शन अभी बड़ा ही अनफॉर्चुनेट बड़ा ही दुर्भाग्यशाली वर्ष कहा जाएगा कि 2020 के अंदर डॉक्टर ए पी जे अब्दुल कलाम ने मिशन ट्वेंटी विजन ट्वेंटी ट्वेंटी एक लिखा था वाई एस राजन जी के साथ इंडिया ट्वेंटी ट्वेंटी उन्होंने बहुत कुछ बताया था कि हमारे पास एक विजन है न्यू मेलेनियम का लेकिन अनफॉर्चुनेटली हमको क्या किया हमें क्या करना पड़ा उन्नीस का ये देख रहे हैं आप लोग वैसे ही हम लोगों के आज भी आप वीयर ए मास्क के मैसेज देख रहे होंगे तो यहाँ पर इन्फ्लुएंजा के 1918 में आया था अभी हम लोग जो जूझ रहे हैं वो कोविड 19 से जूझ रहे हैं तो 2020 के बाद 2021 तक अभी भी प्रोसीड चल रहा है तो ये जो पैंडेमिक आई थी 1918 में वैसा ही कुछ सीन आज हमें देखने को मिल रहा है तो हम लोग जिससे डिपेट रहे तो अब कहा जाता है कि नेसेसिटी इज़ द मदर ऑफ ऑल द इन्वेंशन तो यहाँ पर भी ये बात ट्रू है कि नेसेसिटी इज़ रियली गिव राइज टू मैनी इन्वेंशन ऑल द बॉडीज ऑफ इंडिया एंगेज इन दिस लाइक एस डिपार्टमेंट ऑफ साइंस एंड टेक्नोलॉजी डी एस टी के डी वी टी डिवाइन ऑफ बायो टेक्नोलॉजी इंडस्ट्रियल रिसर्च सी एस आई आर एंड मिनिस्ट्र सी आई सी एम आर मिनिस्ट्री ऑफ हेल्थ एंड फैमिली वेलफेयर सो दीज ऑल मिनिस्ट्रीज इंगेज इन दिस पेंडेमिक अबेडमेंट एज अ रिजल्ट दे क्रिएटेड द आरोग्य सेति दैट इज इंस्टॉल्ड इन ऑल योर मोबाइल्स सो हेयर यू कैन सी दिस सम नेम ऑफ सम सर्टन टेक्नोलॉजी फूड ऑपरेटेड वॉशिंग मैथमेटिकल मॉडलिंग बैटरी ऑपरेटेड राइट आरोग्य सेतु इट इज एनदर एग्जाम्पल so here there are the some technology uv sanitation team sanitization bada important ho gaya hamare 2021 aur 2020 mein so sanitizer rejection ke liye badi technology aayi prithvi robot aaya portable emergency medical ventilator aaya to uv disinfection tower aaya isko agar rakh dete hain aap kisi ka agar koi treatment chal raha hai to disinfection karne ke baad usko pure area ko wo jo hai disinfectant kar dega agar koi human iske contact mein aaye to auto shut off ho jata hai to yahan par रोबोटिक्स ऑनलाइन एंटरटेनमेंट ओ टी प्लेटफॉर्म पे आपने देखा बड़ी बड़ी मूवीज रिलीज हुई टेले हेल्थ टेले हेल्थ की बात होने लगी डिस्टेंस लर्निंग बढ़ गई हम लोग भी डिस्टेंस लर्निंग ही एक तरीके से कर रहे हैं जुड़े हुए हैं रिमोट वर्क और डिजिटल कॉन्टेक्ट लेस पेमेंट बहुत बढ़ गए लोग नोट लेने से कतराने लगे डिजिटल और मोबाइल ऐप्स बहुत सारे हो गए इसके बाद हमारा जो सी सी टी वी बेस साउथ कोरिया और सिंगापुर देशों ने जैसे देशों ने अपनाया टच फ्री बायोमेट्रिक सिस्टम यूनिवर्सिटीज के अंदर आ गए पहले हम लोग पंच करते थे अभी फिर ये टच फ्री बायोमेट्रिक सिस्टम आ गया ऑटोनोमस वहीकल्स आर्टिफिशियल इंटेलिजेंस ये अब जितने भी एजुकेशन सेक्टर से जुड़े लोग चाहे वो स्टूडेंट हो चाहे फैकल्टी हो चाहे कोई भी हो जो स्टूडेंट जितने लोग भी हैं और सभी एक ना एक बात तो हम लोग स्टूडेंट रहते ही हैं तो 190 देशों में इसका इफेक्ट हुआ और कोविड नाइन्टीन पेंडेमिक ने अब तक की सबसे ज़्यादा लार्जेस्ट डिस्ट्रप्शन एजुकेशन सिस्टम को किया लगभग एक बिलियन लर्नर्स को प्रभावित किया तो यहाँ पर लगभग 2020 अप्रैल 2020 में ये रिपोर्ट आ गई थी कि चौरानवे परसेंट लर्नर वर्ल्ड वाइड अफेक्टेड बाय पैंडेमिक और ये रिप्रेजेंट करता था 1.58 बिलियन चिल्ड्रन एंड यूथ सो दिस इज दिस वाज द रिपोर्ट फ्रॉम एजुकेशन ड्यूरिंग कोविड 19 बियॉन्ड अगस्त 2020 ऑफ यूनाइटेड नेशन सो so, uh, कैसे स्कूल्स को खोलें कैसे यूनिवर्सिटी को चालू करें कैसे एजुकेशन सिस्टम को स्टार्ट करें ये बहुत बड़ा चैलेंज है हमारे सामने तो यहाँ पर टेक्नोलॉजी का यूज हुआ रिओपनिंग स्कूल एंड सोशल डिस्टेंस वर्ल्ड में तो यहाँ हमने आपको मैं ब्रीफ में दिखा रहा हूँ पार्टीशन ऑटोमेटिक सैनिटीएस यहाँ जी एफ एस ट्रैकर सेंसर यहाँ से बिना हाथ लगाए यहाँ पर सैनिटाइजर जो है उसको डिस्पेंस कर सकते हैं हाई एफिशेंसी पार्टिकुलर एयर हिपा सो दे आर ऑल्सो यूजफुल टू keep the clear classes clean exhaust air diffuser and dampers so hand feed uh, for the labs computer lab purpose handheld uvc uvc light uh, wand sterilizer for their portable rechargeable mini uvc sanitizer lamp touch free taps and uh, uh, and faucet gps tracking clear tracking jo students ja rahe hain unko hum track kar sakte hain kahan par kya hai unke parents bhi kar sakte hain to yahan par to situation theek hai ye bade elite class schools ke liye the but agar hum real india ki baat kare to situation yahan par aati hai So, tech resilience यहाँ पर क्या काम कर रही है यहाँ पर हमने इंडिजीनियस सोल्यूशन डेवलप किया मार्क डिस्पेंसर स्मार्ट डिस्टेंसिंग टच फ्री पैडल ये बड़े सस्ते हैं यहाँ सैनिटेशन टनल ये जुगाड़ जिसको कहा गया इसकी बात हुई हैंड्स फ्री वॉश बेसिन लगे जिनको सिर्फ एक टाने के टंकी टैंक से बनाया गया तो ये सर सब सैनिटेशन टेक्निक एंड वाटर वॉशिंग एंड वॉशिंग टेक्निक्स 
और यहाँ पर आप देख सकते हैं कि अभी जो टॉक्टी की बात कर रहा था कि मैंने अपनी प्रेजेंटेशन में बताया था कि यहाँ पर साइक्लोन बढ़ा है यहाँ पर साइक्लोन स्टॉम टॉक्टी की बात करें थर्टीन में के अराउंड इसका जो लो प्रेशर एरिया डेवलप हुआ साउथ ईस्ट अरेबियन सी में तो यहाँ पर इस तरीके से लक्षद्वीप हमारा जो साइक्लोनिक स्टॉम आगे चला हमारा ईस्ट सेंट्रल अरेबियन सी की तरफ जो ये मूवमेंट है एक्चुअली ये थोड़ा ब्लर पिक्चर हो क्योंकि ये डायरेक्टली वही इमेज है जो हमारी प्राइम मिनिस्टर जो ऑनरेबल प्राइम मिनिस्टर जिसकी मीटिंग ली थी उन्होंने तो उसमें जो स्लाइड प्रेजेंट की गई थी ये उसी की पिक्चर है तो ये वहीं का हमारा एक साइक्लोन का एक ओवरव्यू है अब साइक्लोन को अगर हम देखें तो उसका कोर्स कुछ इस तरह से है ये देख सकते हैं आप इस तरीके से ये मूव इस तरह से हो रहा है यहाँ पर 16, 17, 18, 18, 18, 18 19 तो इस तरीके से हम चल रहे हैं और यहाँ पर जब अगर एक्सपोजर की बात करें तो 7.4 मिलियन पीपल एक्सपोज टू द पोटेंशियल ट्रॉपिकल साइक्लोन वेंट वाइड स्पोर्ट डैमेज एंड अबाउट सो सिक्सटी अडल्ट फिफ्टीन टू सिक्सटी फोर चिल्ड्रंस भी हैं उसमें एल्डरली भी है 25.6 बिलियन की कैपिटल एक्सपोजर पे खत्म हो सकती है बर्बाद हो सकती है पोटेंशियल नीड पे हमको यहाँ पर 3.4 बिलियन किलो कैलोरी पर डे प्रोवाइड करनी होगी 4.9 मिलियन लीटर पानी को देना पड़ेगा वहाँ पर फॉर फॉर वंस दिस मच 100 लीटर वेस्ट बिन्स हमको देना पड़ेगा स्क्वायर मीटर्स 5.6 मिलियन स्क्वायर मीटर शेल्टर की जरूरत पड़ेगी तो बड़ी नीड है इस ट्रॉपिकल साइक्लोन टॉक्टी के लिए तो यहाँ अगर हम इंडिया का देखें तो इंडिया की एक लीडरशिप है इस आ, को प्रेडिक्ट करने में और इसको आ, जो फोरकास्ट करने में अमित सर आई थिंक आई एम टेकिंग मच टाइम सो आई शुड लाइक टू वाइंड अप ओके सर सो दिस इज समथिंग दैट इंडिया इज प्रोवाइडिंग द असिस्टेंट टू अदर कंट्रीज आल्सो तो दिस फॉर दिस डब्ल्यू एम में अपलॉट आई एम टू दैट सो नाउ वी कैन सी टेक्टेल ऑफ इम्प्रूवमेंट वी कैन सी uh from 1970 to to 1977 we have uh, save a number of lives right so this figure down to this one and now it's going down with every cyclone now you can see this scheme national cyclone risk mitigation project ncrmp and ncrmp this is to in two phase ncrmp 1 and 2 so in this we have a technical assistant of cyclone component c so there is also a number of technologies developed you can see in these meetings these are the pictures from those respective meetings and coastal area adaptation technologies number of technologies how we can say, see this artificial dune sea wall sea dicks and storm surge barrier land claims etc and this is the recent tweet from uh, uh, executive director nidm mar bindal sir so this uh, he said that uh, the this is the right time to identify types of trees that could withstand the 150 to 180 km per hour cyclonic storm as per soil condition so massive drive to plant them along the coast as nature based solution so he suggests a nature based solution and say it and it's a great idea to plant them uh, uh, along the coastal boundary so that we can save them so this is a great idea i must say in a nutshell a story i take a little bit more time because the <laughs> topic was little bit long so here you can see sabhi log dekhe hain isko pandemic climate change aur conflict jo disaster log jhel rahe hain aur economy niche ja rahi hai to they are collaborating better than us sina sir they are collaborating better than us so we have to collaborate better them to to save lives to save our society so save our people so with this so technology is indistinguishable indistinguishable from ma from magic if it is Uh, use in a right way so mahatma gandhi but say so earth provide the enough to satisfy every man's needs but not every man's greed so with this word i would like to wind up this presentation and thank you very much for your patient for listening and uh, thank you thank you all thank you so much abdesh sir sir has uh, presented a very vast information about the use of uh, civil engineering technology in disaster management preparedness preparedness and uh, he has also very well presented uh, the uh, the aspects with very good examples of uh, new technologies new developments in the field of civil engineering through which we can uh, we can be ready for the future disasters we can get uh, the risk reduction in a proper way thank you so much sir and now uh, please allow me to welcome our next speaker dr arun a shah from wildlife sos bangalore he will be speaking we welcome you sir he will be speaking on the topic man animal conflict and its management may i now request ms shrinkla to introduce sir 
Shrinkla, please. Every, yes. Everything that is faced can be changed, but nothing can be changed until it is faced. With these strong words, I would like to call upon another encouraging speaker, Dr. Arun M. Shah, sir, Wildlife SOS at Bangalore. Sir has been working with Wildlife SOS since 2004. He has been extremely vocal about the need for a holistic approach towards ending the practice instead of merely addressing some parts of the issue. For instance, a strong proponent of the need for establishing alternate methods of livelihood for the Kalinda community, which was involved in the 400 year old dancing beer practice. In his 16 year old association with Wildlife SOS, Sir has been involved in the rescue of over 70 wild slot beers and releasing them back into the wild. He currently operates out of the Banalgatta Beer Rescue Center as Director, Research and Veterinary Operation. Now I would like to ask Sir to carry forward this session. A very good morning to all. Am I audible to everyone? Yes, sir, you are. Yes, and is my uh, presentation on a full screen mode? Yes, it is. Thank you. Yes, yes. Uh, 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 a very good morning to all and uh, thank you so much for the wonderful introduction. And I was even listening to the previous speaker's talk. It was, as usual, uh, uh, amazing. And here, uh, uh, again, uh, to start with the human wildlife interface and its management, uh, I just wanted to start with some brief introduction about uh, 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 some of those areas pertaining to this uh, human wildlife interface. And one small thing I would like to uh, add here is nowadays the wildlife human conflict is not an appropriate word. So uh, uh, we need to uh, mention that as a human wildlife interface, which is uh, uh, less uh, uh, intensive. And it, we should make sure that the uh, younger generation or even the existing community should understand that uh, Mother Earth is for everyone. So I really would like to acknowledge uh, before I start my uh, regular presentation and uh, I am uh, really uh, thankful to uh, Dr. Ashish sir uh, from National Institute of uh, Disaster Management uh, and uh, the uh, association with uh, Sri Tamparu Memorial University, SRMU and uh, Dr. Amit Sinha sir for uh, extending uh, all the uh, 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 good uh, presentations in uh, this entire three days program. Uh, I was on and off uh, into the uh, uh, presentations and it was really appreciable. And I really would like to thank the State Forest Department wherever we are in collaboration with Karnataka Forest Department, UP Forest Department, Tamil Nadu and Chhattisgarh Forest Department and our co-founders of Wildlife SOS, Mr. Karthik Sitinarayan and Geeta Seshmani. And our head uh, biologist, Swaminathan, uh, is always uh, in our team to execute a lot of uh, human wildlife interface uh, activities. And of course, uh, not but not least, uh, all the animal care staff of the organization were all dedicated and then uh, interested in these kind of uh, uh, rescue and rehabilitation activities. And uh, of course, a special thanks to WhatsApp group because some of those uh, videos I have actually taken from the WhatsApp group and we really uh, uh, have to uh, take some of the good information. I mean, now we know that in the pandemic situation, there are so much of unwanted uh, WhatsApp uh, stuff are uh, moving around. But still, if you can make use of the technologies in a positive way, it will be definitely useful. So before I get into a proper uh, topic of the presentation, I just wanted to introduce the organization where I'm currently part of. and. Uh, uh, Wildlife SOS is, is uh, actually uh, almost a two-decade organization, and it's a conservation non-profit organization established by both our co-founders, and uh, we have primarily uh, uh, dealt with dancing bear trade, which was uh, almost around 400-year-old uh, tradition in our country. and. Uh, uh, of course, this is in collaboration with Forest Department of each and every state. Uh, Wildlife SOS has come forward to rehabilitate both the animals as well as the Kalandar communities. And uh, over 620 sloth bears were rescued and uh, housed in different uh, facilities of the organization, which was created under the umbrella of uh, State Forest Department. 
And today, Wildlife SOS has got over 30 active conservation projects across the country, and which primarily includes mitigation of human wildlife interface, promote biodiversity and habitat protection, along with sustainable rehabilitation of as wild poaching communities and awareness and training of field staff. Because it is always important to make sure the stakeholders are really educated with the current uh, uh, scenario of all these areas, whether it is uh, uh, wildlife trafficking or human wildlife conflict or uh, interface, or even the existing population of all these wildlife and their ecological importance. So it is very important to understand the wildlife presence and the advantage to the ecosystem before we start blaming any animal. So apart from the Bear Rehabilitation Center, Wildlife Institute has started uh, coordinating and co uh, co collaborating with the uh, various other state forest department. One among that is the Monik uh, Do Leopard Rescue and Rehabilitation Center in Maharashtra, which was established in 2002 and currently holding uh, 32 leopards uh, are all from rescued from various uh, uh, re uh, conflict situations and rehabilitated them. Uh, in case if they were a good specimen or a good candidate to go back to wild, we always release them, them, release them back in the wild. In case if they lose that uh, chance or if they have some kind of uh, uh, deadly injuries or even sometimes they may need some veterinary care for over a month or two, then they usually lose the potential to go back to wild. So such uh, individuals are housed and looked after by our team, again, as usual under the umbrella of uh, Forest Department of the state. And the primary objective of all these uh, uh, rehabilitation centers are really to create awareness on conflict mitigation, rescue and rehabilitation of all these uh, animals which are really in need of veterinary care and captive care management or establishment of different standard operating protocols so that we can learn how to deal with these species when we uh, face any kind of uh, interactions or uh, issues in the free ranging area. And of course, research is an ongoing process in any field. In fact, just now uh, our uh, esteemed speaker, uh, Ashish Kumar sir, is telling about all the updated technological intervention in dealing with uh, humankind. So uh, the similar such kind of activities can be really established to even save our Indian wildlife as well. So and moved on to the next project is Elephant Conservation Care Center, again established by Wildlife Israel in the year 2010. And it's again collaborated a project with the uh, UPFD and Haryana Forest Department. And we have a two such center, one in Haryana, the other one is in UP. And we usually rescue all these disabled, uh, uh, retired, and uh, literally injured, and then they were uh, abused or uh, badly uh, treated in the past. And they were actually having a good time in the rehabilitation center because uh, we need to respect each and every species. And here you can see some of the pictures of before and after. And some of these animals were literally uh, found almost dead on the street and even the owners of these animals were vanished because they were under the impression after the truck hit by the uh, I mean the elephant was hit by the truck and uh, they assumed that the elephant was dead because it was not showing any movement and when we came to know the news and immediately our rapid response unit have gone there and then examined the animal and immediately given all the first aid and the emergency medications and we revived the animal you can see the after picture on the right side of uh, uh, the slide are all those elephants before rescue and after rescue. And again here, captive care and research is one of the priority of all these rehabilitation center. And moving on to the habitat protection. So wildlife SOA is not only involves in uh, establishing rehabilitation center for different species, and also they uh, put in a lot of resources and efforts to protect the habitat. Anyway, regarding that, I'll be telling in my future slides, what is the importance of habitat protection if you really want to conserve any of this Indian wildlife. So in this presentation, I have structured uh, in a way that I'll be dealing with many of these uh, components. And uh, uh, I'm glad if it is an interactive session, I am happy to stop anyway in between and then I can uh, uh, address your uh, doubts or questions. But uh, at the end also, you are uh, happy to ask any such questions. And uh, uh, this is not a unique uh, subject. And we all know that there are a lot of human wildlife interface in different states, in different uh, intensities. So 
we need to understand some of the basic concepts. So I have given very basic concepts in this presentation so that we will all be in a same platform so that our future uh, uh, movements or future progress will be on a proper uh, degree. So I'm going to tell about uh, wildlife uh, in India and what is human wildlife interface and what are all the reasons for this human wildlife interface and need for rescue and rehabilitation of wildlife and various mitigation measures. So wildlife in India, of course, it's one of the 17 mega biodiversity countries and we are rich in uh, wildlife uh, uh, wealth or even ecosystem. Uh, particularly, some of those statistics will give you a nice uh, idea that our total forest area is 5.03 percentage, which is 1,71,921 square kilometers. And uh, we have 981 protected areas. It's, it's in short called as PAs and 104 national parks, 566 sanctuaries, 97 conservation reserves and 214 community reserves. And uh, you can see some of the other interesting facts or even the statistics. Our biodiversity is really, really rich and we are all really uh, uh, blessed to have and live in such a wonderful uh, country. And uh, we do have 12.6 percentage of the entire avian species in our country. And similarly, 11.7 percentage of marine species in our country, 7.6 percentage out of the whole mammalian species are in our country. And there are many endemic species. So endemism is one of the beautiful subject. And we, if we talk about that, it can uh, go altogether a separate uh, presentation. So even we uh, have a lot of reptilian, flowering plant species, amphibian species, uh, very unique to our country. Yes, now we are getting into a proper uh, title of the presentation is man-animal interface. So what is man-animal interface? So this is uh, in simple, it can be defined as the interaction between the wild animal and the people. So uh, it may be resulted in negative or sometimes uh, to people or sometimes to their resources. And on the same side, it can be detrimental to the animal life as well as its habitat. So uh, both these uh, pros and cons or even uh, uh, positive negatives may happen to either wildlife or to humankind. So this takes, uh, it, it emerges in different forms. And, uh, but if you uh, get to the bottom line of this information, it primarily because of man-made disaster. So that is why uh, it's very appropriate when we, when we talk about uh, 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 disaster management, it's not only about natural calamities. So we should definitely uh, understand that some of these disasters were made by people. So how can we be not responsible for such kind of unnatural or uh, uh, man-made disasters? It is our responsibility to make sure that we understand the subject in order to uh, avoid such kind of blunder mistakes. So some of these examples you must have seen, uh, those were all over the uh, internet and uh, you can see uh, the elephants were uh, crop riding into the field and then when the people really wanted to drive them away from uh, uh, their localities or even the neighboring forest, uh, they, they do a lot of inhuman activities like throwing uh, uh, fireballs and sometimes uh, uh, putting snares and then beating them to death and a lot of a uh, uh, lot of uh, inhuman approach and as I said man-made disasters uh, you can see in, in in these pictures I mean our previous speaker was also amazingly giving the statistics of how many animals were killed in the uh, uh, train or even road pollution. So these have become very uh, usual or common stuff. I mean, in the recent past also, we lost almost uh, 18 uh, uh, elephant herd in one of the lightning shock, thunder lightning shock in Assam. So uh, such, such kind of disasters uh, were actually called as natural disasters. But these are, uh, I mean, these pictures in front of you are all made by human beings. So which can be definitely avoided if
हेलो 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 सर सर योर वॉइस नॉट कमिंग अरुण सर आई थिंक वी हैव अ लॉस ऑफ कनेक्शन इशू अरुण सर कैन यू हियर अस यस सर he he must be having a loss of connection issue we are we are going through cyclonic effects uh, around so technological yes sir ashish sir is contacting him in the meantime uh, ashish uh, avdesh sir uh, i want to ask you something there was many questions going on in the chat box uh, uh, like uh, uh, i'm just taking the benefit of the uh, available time here in the uh, sir is here sir sir is here sir is here sir you are on mute sir please unmute yourself arun sir arun sir please unmute yourself yes sir and uh, pre previously the host was not allowing me to unmute yes oh sorry, 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 now? sorry sorry yes sir you are audible now sir yeah yeah i'm so sorry about the inconvenience because uh, Oh, no. uh, my uh, i am near a jungle again <laughs> oh, no. <laughs> is my screen on a full uh, slides mode no sir no sir it, not it is coming coming sir yes. not on full slide mode sir it is what the... about now ha huh, yes sir it is now sorry i i got a power cut i oh. I, i connected my phone now okay uh, right so probably uh, i can uh, remove of my uh, video so that it will be more uh, data friendly yeah yeah am i audible now so i was talking about this man made disaster yes sir you are audible yeah yeah thank you thank you thank you yeah the, all these kind of uh, uh, human wildlife interaction is primarily the imbalance between the ecocentrism and the anthropocentrism ecocentrism is nothing but as our previous speaker was also mentioning one of the beautiful quote from mahatma gandhi is the earth provides everything based on our need not for our greed so now the ecocentrism is basically a balanced approach between the existence of the animal and all the other life on the planet and sorry uh, humans and all the other uh, living things on the planet but when we talk about anthropocentrism we won't bother about anybody else it's it's completely self centric uh, or human centric life so if this approach was existing uh, whatever the technology we have we will not be able to give justice to the mother earth so uh, as we all know the reason for all these uh, uh, mm, Uh, uh interaction i mean a uh, 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 negative or even a, a detrimental interaction between human and wildlife is primarily because of population explosion and deforestation and consumerism or even nowadays uh, uh, a new concept is coming as minimalism so as long as we need something we should invest on it or we should secure those uh, stuffs not uh, uh, not uh, everything for the future and uh, as i always mention to all school kids that Uh, animals will never save their food for next few days in the refrigerator so they always uh, make a fresh food and make sure that uh, the food is also healthy and they will also uh, won't show any kind of greediness so it's very very unfortunate that uh, people have uh, taken a different stand and uh, try to secure uh, all those stuffs and unfortunately the land space on earth cannot be expanded so we should definitely come back to our uh, regular thought process and make sure that uh, our approaches are really logical and also uh, sensible and depletion of forest cover and its consequences you can always see uh, in one of the statistic on the uh, uh, net was showing the encroachment plays a major major disaster uh, when we lose the forest obviously the forest cover will go down and because of that Uh, animals will have no other choice except coming into your uh, living area and wildlife illegal trade is also one of the 
multi-billion dollar industry. And you can see in one of these uh, uh, WPSI uh, 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 data that uh, trade districts, hotspots, were almost uh, all over the country. So it's, it's all about uh, demand from neighboring countries such as China, China and then uh, all borders were really porous and then a lot of uh, illegal wildlife tra trafficking was going on, but now, uh, thanks to the uh, whole uh, Indian government, that there are multiple levels of uh, 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 intelligence gathering, and then a lot of uh, agencies, including uh, Wildlife SOS, plays a, a, a vital role in uh, catching the contrabands and trying to put those uh, traffickers behind the bar so that uh, uh, they will not indulge in doing such kind of crime in future. But uh, of course, uh, by saying this, all the wild animals in our country are very well protected under an act called Wildlife Protection Act 1972. So, so it was one of the brilliant and uh, nicely made uh, uh, act in our country. And uh, uh, as usual, uh, implementation part of is a little weak. So, but we can still uh, 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 encourage people to make sure that uh, the implementation is done on each and everybody's uh, uh, contest because we, we can't leave everything to government. So uh, here again, the individual's responsibility as per even the Indian constitution that we should individually, every citizen should take such kind of responsibilities. And thrust to sloth bear habitat, for example, I have taken the sloth bear uh, uh, habitat, but it's, it's uh, always uh, uh, extrapolated to all the uh, species on earth, uh, especially in our country. Uh, the ritual hunting makes a lot of uh, uh, threats and illegal mining and quarrying because sloth bears uh, always love to live in such kind of uh, uh, rocky terrain because they, they are like nocturnal animals. They go and make a, a cave uh, or they themselves uh, uh, create or use existing caves to rest during the day and then late in the evening and early in the morning. Till early in the morning, they will be active and then forage in the forest and go back to their original place. So when we start uh, ex extra extracting all the natural resources, ultimately, there won't be any place for them. And ultimately, it ended up in a lot of human uh, animal interface. And by, by doing such kind of uh, uh, extra extracting uh, all these natural resources, obviously, these animals uh, will have no other choice, as I already mentioned. And uh, the reason uh, we need to understand the behavior is if you are not able to provide them what they really need in the, by the nature, then you will not be able to stop any kind of uh, human uh, wildlife interface uh, either now or in future. So, uh, for example, elephants walks for up to 40 kilometers per day. So if, if the habitat is shrinking after shrinking and then there are a lot of encroachment happening and then uh, all around the uh, protected area, a lot of development uh, projects are coming up means then uh, there won't be any option uh, for these big herds. I mean, herds sometimes will be like uh, 40, 50 elephants and then multiple herds makes the clan. So uh, imagine one or two clans put together uh, will be more than 200 elephants in one particular protected area. So when, when we are not uh, 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 supplementing their area, at least we should not uh, uh, extracting a lot of... Uh, uh, natural habitat from them and again we will push them to uh, make such kind of uh, human wildlife interface and uh, uh, as usual uh, we can always say uh, the human behavior is really unacceptable in many ways and uh, uh, animals have got uh, uh, one single sentence behavioral uh, approach uh, that is famously or even popularly known as fight or flight reflex so it's just very simple for any animal for that matter. So if, if they were challenged, definitely they will try to escape from the location, which is a flight response. If they are not able to do and they have no other choice apart from uh, uh, trying to fight with the opponent, then they have to take that mode of uh, uh, fight uh, uh, behavior or fight uh, action. But here you can see people will go and then... Uh, uh, do a lot of nonsense things like taking selfies uh, in uh, front of a uh, wild uh, tuskers and they will be chasing the animal throwing some kind of uh, uh, fireballs which definitely make them very uh, uh, arrogant or sometimes even aggressive uh, because they have no other choice and uh, 
these kind of uh, uh, messages or even pictures are coming all over the uh, uh, country and it's it's of course very uh, discouraging but we we have to make sure that uh, people should have adequately uh, educated and make sure that such kind of conflicts can be mitigated in a very sensible way and we always uh, think that we are human beings but being human is more uh, appropriate in this uh, particular uh, uh, issues the elephant as usual uh, really make the place havoc and then if they get into uh, uh, the human habitat we may lose a lot of properties and if if uh, sometimes uh, 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 if they come into some kind of uh, crop raiding or uh, getting into a village then uh, many uh, at times uh, people have to lose their life and for example slot pair attack victims because uh, wildlife is always uh, uh, undertaken a study for 5 years uh, to study the human bear uh, interface uh, in uh, the state of karnataka and then uh, over 5 years of data uh, uh, was actually presented in this uh, one slide it was actually effort of uh, uh, six uh, wildlife biologist uh, over five years and uh, uh, you can uh, definitely see the major attack happens in the fringe of the forest which is which is very acceptable because this shows uh, the habitat degradation or even uh, uh, habitat loss or even habitat encroachment is the only reason for them to come out for their basic food and water so animal casualty as you can see here this animal was trying to escape a simple uh, statement of fight or flight reflex so if we are not allowing them to run away then definitely they will take another uh, uh, other uh, mode of uh, action and then uh, at the end they have to lose their life because uh, human beings are always dominant and they, they for some reason they always say that there is no other uh, species uh, need to be with us so so it's 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 very uh, unfortunate that uh, the behavior of uh, human beings are literally unacceptable at many many times i mean this was one of the recent uh, video happened uh, in one of the southern state and uh, you can see uh, a bear got on to a tree and then uh, they they came to know uh, in the morning and it's a simple mitigation uh, tool that if you just leave the bear undisturbed uh, they being an nocturnal animal they would have climbed down and then vanished from the place on their own but putting or setting fire on uh, their body is definitely unacceptable and then not necessary and this is not the way to uh, create animal casualties and then if the if, if the bear comes down because of uh, the bodily uh, irritation or a, a problem then we will have to uh, admit some of the people into ic there is no other choice so on the other ground the casualty is not always uh, by the uh, big mammals or animal attacks it's it happens primarily because of snake bite so it's again our duty to make sure that uh, we would be able to identify this big four venomous snakes so it's not a big rocket science and if you can uh, nowadays with the uh, advantage of the media you can see multiple uh, photos and multiple Uh, uh, angles of photos and different age groups of uh, or sizes of these snakes and then make sure that uh, you are very much uh, understanding these four big uh, 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 venomous snakes in our country so and uh, again i would like to mention here that all these four venomous snakes have got anti snake venom with us so so we can easily help the victim and we can Uh, most of the time if the if the delay is not so much we can definitely uh, uh, make the victim survive so that's why uh, it's it's very important to understand and uh, uh, make sure that our behavioral uh, aspects towards these uh, smaller uh, animals has to be uh, very ethical as we all know that uh, if we are not keeping our surrounding clean then automatically it invites rats and then by default uh, it 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 uh, tracks snakes so we should uh, uh, implement all those basic uh, knowledge because uh, every i am sure everyone uh, 
uh, already read about the food web, food chain, all those things in our school days. But but what is the implementation happening? How far we are trying to implement uh, such things on the real life? So that is why I mentioned in the beginning itself, it is every individual's responsibility to make sure that we are consciously making some mistake. So that's very important. And here you can see some of this mishandling is only creates a, a lot of casualties. Uh, on the left side video, someone was trying to kiss the snake. Is that really necessary? So uh, ultimately that particular guy uh, uh, lost his life because uh, that particular uh, cobra has uh, kissed him back in his lips and then he lost his life. So uh, I, I don't think it is an, uh, a desired activity and we should not show our heroism uh, in front of these poor animals. And then on the other side also you could have seen that uh, he was trying to mishandle the animal by just uh, putting the hook on the head. So this hook or head fixing is definitely not a good method of uh, uh, dealing with the snake, especially these kind of vipers. Uh, uh, he also lost his life. So coming to mitigation measures, uh, uh, it's, it's very uh, 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 good area to uh, uh, find and then create a lot of innovative mitigation measures. And uh, these are come up some of the traditional way of doing uh, uh, mitigations like uh, physical uh, method uh, through barriers and uh, other uh, physical methods. I'll be showing you some photographs in the coming forthcoming slides and financial. Uh, compensation uh, or subsidized uh, fodder supply by the government, behavioral uh, mitigation measures, educational uh, based mitigation measures, scientific technology and use of uh, advanced technologies for uh, uh, mitigating the human wildlife interface and rescue and rehabilitation process. So uh, I just wanted to uh, mention here that there is no universal method for every species or every uh, uh, geographical uh, location. So it's always uh, site specific and situation specific and species specific. So uh, uh, one should uh, keep this in mind and then try to come up with an uh, uh, innovative method. At the same time, it should be uh, uh, user friendly and animal friendly. At the same time, it should be economical. Otherwise, uh, uh, as we know, even uh, I could really take the example of our last speaker that though we have a lot of uh, advanced uh, uh, technologies in teaching kids. But uh, uh, when we think about Indian scenario, then we have to customize some of those things. I mean, uh, even though if it is a jugad, then but still, which is really presentable and available and doable, then we should stick on to so, the, such kind of uh, mitigation ideas. Though if it is not 100% uh, uh, result oriented, but still nothing wrong in uh, doing something as far as it is not, or as long as it is not hurting any animal or even the people or any other ecosystem of the particular area. So primarily before we get into a major mitigation measures, we should always start with do's and don'ts, whether it is a, a, a stakeholders a policy meeting or even a, a, a departmental staff or even the local, local peoples or even Gram Pradhan or Panchayat, the entire community or uh, people, uh, schools, colleges around the protected areas needs to know what to do, what not to do, so that we will not unnecessarily indulge in aggravating or provoking any animal to invite such kind of human wildlife interface issues. So some of the scientific technology and resource uh, planning methods are really, really important. For example, uh, master plan for Delhi 2021 was made <laughs> much earlier, much, much earlier. And then the planned growth of the city really makes a lot of sense so that you won't uh, uh, start uh, changing uh, the natural habitat abruptly. So if it is on a phased way, and if we have taken a lot of measures, uh, uh, especially these EIA, like uh, environmental impact assessment uh, 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 programs uh, before we start any developmental projects, it, it definitely uh, gives advantage and win-win uh, between both uh, uh, people as well as the animal living in that uh, natural habitat. So, and the center picture is uh, an example of uh, disguise, which was actually established in the state of Maharashtra. And uh, the reason why I placed this picture is there are a lot of innovative ideas which can be very user-friendly and then 
very economical. And then before we start intervening them, like capturing them or translocating them or, or, or removing them from the uh, natural habitat, can be a last result. So before that, we should try to achieve and ex exhaust all the possibilities of uh, uh, doing the mitigation me measures with a, a very basic idea of ethicality and scientific uh, and the behavioral based approach. So only then it will be uh, result oriented. Otherwise, it will be very temporary. And then uh, uh, I, I'll again uh, uh, tell you here, uh, trust me that all these animals are really intelligent than people. So they, they can definitely get over with all the ideas what we are trying to make. And then we think that that's an intelligent idea on Earth. But uh, very next month, the animal will uh, understand and know how to get over it. So uh, the financial compensation, as I uh, uh, already mentioned, each uh, state has got a different uh, methods. But anyway, in 2018, Ministry of Environment, Forest and Climate Change is actually uh, raised to the compensation because that's the first and foremost uh, uh, area of the mitigation because the retaliation killing or retaliation towards the animal can be addressed because uh, uh, once somebody lost their property or even house or uh, their keti or even uh, uh, life of their family members definitely they will be uh, really upset and they will be uh, showing their anger towards this animal so that's why a lot of retaliation killing either electrocution or sometimes even uh, 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 putting snares or even the country made bombs or uh, poisoning. So n a number of uh, uh, retaliations are uh, happening uh, nowadays. So we should make sure that the uh, uh, sentiment should not be affected or should not be touched because of these animals. Because when someone is not in a good uh, uh, phase of uh, mood, like uh, if they lost any of their uh, property or a farmer lost their uh, uh, farmland or their complete yield on that particular year or lost their family members, then definitely there won't be any uh, uh, success if you are trying to go and then educate them or giving them awareness program at that point of time. So that is why uh, uh, the ministry has came up with a wonderful idea and it is not a new uh, idea. I mean, uh, uh, it started from 60,000. Now, uh, the grievous injury people uh, gets two lakhs uh, against their uh, bodily injury. So uh, uh, over uh, this 2016-17 to 18-19, uh, the government has paid a compensation of over 48.14 crores. So it's not an uh, uh, easy uh, task, but at the same time, uh, this is one of the very major and the key factor that uh, the financial compensation uh, it gives such kind of uh, uh, support to the uh, existing wildlife in and around the uh, uh, villages, uh, especially the hamlets uh, uh, present in and around the villages or sometimes even uh, some of those uh, tribal people living inside the protected areas should really need such kind of compensation so that the retaliation can be reduced or completely avoided. And useful barricades, as I was mentioning, electric fences, those were again uh, uh, good practice, but again, uh, it has got its own disadvantages like a uh, high amount of maintenance is needed. If it is not uh, happening, then you will end up uh, uh, losing a proper result from the uh, uh, method. And beehives was also one of the uh, uh, acoustic uh, deterrent used for uh, human uh, wildlife uh, conflict uh, areas. And the ditches or uh, uh, rubber walls and sometimes alternate uh, crops and uh, uh, multiple uh, such uh, barricades can be combined and used uh, together also where there is a diffused boundary and uh, uh, the deterrent measures were uh, not appropriate for uh, uh, single by using single methods so then we may have to use multiple uh, methods and here rail tracking fencing uh, this this photos were taken in banargata national park so it it actually uh, proves a, a very good uh, mitigation uh, measure uh, though it's 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 very expensive and uh, some of these combined methods can also be used it's all depends on the uh, target species and the uh, geological area which we are trying to uh, pose on these methods and solar power fencing and tentacle fencing tentacle fencing are nothing but a hanging fence method so that the animal won't throw something on the uh, insulator and then trying to cross the uh, boundary so those, those things are also act as a very good uh, uh, measures and elephant proof uh, uh, 
uh, watch towers like uh, anti degradation squads uh, can also be uh, made on the top of it so that uh, the elephant movement can be uh, watched and then uh, adequately informed to the community living around the forest as i already mentioned there are challenges in each and every method as i said there is no universal method when they get over uh, the new technology then we have to also make sure that we are moving uh, moving ahead and then creating some innovative ideas of doing uh, mitigation measures and uh, the conflict mitigation one of the conflict mitigation uh, measure is to rescue and rehabilitate them back in the wild so uh, generally it can be either physical or chemical method physical methods uh, can be only applied for few smaller mammals and then few of the equipments like traps nets snares bomas hooks shoots can be used to capture some of the small mammals and immediately can be uh, released like our common rescue and release of snakes and chemical capture needs specialized uh, uh, professionals and then every drug is based on their species and their body weight and accordingly the remote injections can be used to tranquilize and then make sure that uh, uh, they were adequately monitored before they get revived and then released back in the wild in case if they have got some kind of uh, um, deadly injuries then they can go back to a rehabilitation center under veterinary care and then make sure that uh, uh, they don't have any kind of uh, 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 welfare issues in the captive uh, situation and uh, uh, this is one of the uh, uh, video uh, i just wanted to share with you all that when when the animal goes back into the wild it gives you a lot of pleasure and then kind of uh, that is action end of the day so 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 this is uh uh no one of the uh, uh scientifically the put proven method on to any air or fell uh, i think sir has lost his connection again Sir has joined. Hello. Yes, sir. Am I audible, sir? Yes, sir. Yes. Sir. Yeah. Sorry again for the inconvenience. So this was one of the uh, video I just wanted to share, and probably uh, I'll move on to other slides because we put the. Uh, Uh, transport cage inside and then without immobilizing the animal we actually uh, took the animal into the cage and uh, took the entire cage out and released them back so it's all about your presence of mind and innovative ideas uh, where and how you would really want to help these animals so uh, so those kind of coordinations are very important here i just wanted to uh, show you that if the coordinations were improper then definitely you will invite uh, problems see here Uh, they were trying to rescue the animal from a well but not uh, with the help of uh, net so net is not an appropriate method uh, uh, for a completely conscious uh, uh, bear so uh, here you can see uh, the forest guard and the two uh, um, forest officials were injured very badly and wildlife officials have actually uh, made a very good progress on Uh, avoiding the human leopard uh, interface especially in maharashtra whenever they were actually giving birth uh, uh, to their young ones into sugarcane field and most of the time the farmer or sometimes even uh, uh, the people around uh, that particular uh, field uh, will remove the uh, babies i mean the cubs and then hand over to the forest department thinking that the uh, young ones were abandoned by the mother but uh, which is actually not true and uh, uh when when these animals were 
trying to move out of their jungle because of a lot of disturbances and they have to uh, um, live or uh, accommodate themselves uh, with uh, uh, available uh, resources or the uh, forested areas which is uh, a sugarcane field for an urban living leopard so they give uh, birth there and then they will come back and take the uh, cups back so as long as we are not intervening with that uh, it will be always a uh, uh, useful uh, uh, tool for the uh, mitigation measure otherwise if if the mother was actually losing these cups then they she may go uh, uh, upset and then uh, trying to uh, look for the young ones and then that leads to a lot of uh, human wildlife interface so the other scientific approach is uh, radio collaring the uh, conflict uh, situated animals and then before we put them back in the wild we place uh, radio collar on them on the left side we were putting a, a, a radio collar on a wild uh, matriarch elephant uh, which is a, a leader of a female uh, in a herd and the other side uh, a rehabilitated sloth pair was uh, fixed with a radio collar gps radio collar and then the monitoring of the animal will happen once they are uh, back into the wild so that it it gives us uh, information about their movement and that enables us to alert the local community through early warning uh, system so uh, nowadays uh, with the advantage of whatsapp uh, we have created a lot of stakeholders and volunteers whatsapp group i mean over uh, uh, 12 to 13 whatsapp groups we have and then we will be updating uh, the people and the stakeholders and people or uh, also the forest department people that the gps location of this particular elephant two hours before is in this particular location so that uh, the people uh, uh, moving around there or working around that particular area will be alert and now nowadays everyone carries android phone so it is very easy for them to see the message and then make sure that they won't be unnecessarily going out and it is actually made in different uh, languages even it it made uh, uh, these informations are given in vernacular language especially in chatisgadi and uh, uh, hindi and also english so it's it's uh, very much useful to protect the uh, uh, life of the uh, uh, people living around the forest and uh, of course the conservation education programs are always important as i said uh, uh, as long as we are not uh, appropriately understanding the presence or even the importance of the species uh, uh, living with us we will not be able to respect them so that's why we have to start those things with kids and uh, we actually uh, keep uh, training and then giving uh, continuing education programs for forest guards and uh, uh, different sectors of stakeholders and uh, uh, i think with the uh, next two three slides i'll be concluding my presentation the transportation vehicle also makes one of the a uh, key factor or a tool for the mitigation measure so uh, we have to be very careful when we were shifting these animals from one place to a, a other place within their geographical or the natural habitat location and this was the uh, uh, elephant uh, transport vehicle created by wildlife officers which was very unique and i think first of its kind in our country and uh, this uh, transportation uh, cage with a wheel and a trapping mechanism also was uh, proven a very successful uh, translocation of these animals when we are actually rescuing them by placing it on their natural habitat i mean whenever they moved out of the uh, uh, original habitat and we uh, uh, lock them there and then there won't be any uh, place for them to see uh, uh, the crowd and then start uh, getting provoked and then they will be clawing and then biting the claws and they will be losing their either tooth or claws uh, so that uh, uh, they will not get a chance to go back to wild uh, 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 with respect to leopards and tigers especially uh, the vets will always uh, certify that because of no claws and uh, broken canines this particular individual can't be released back in the wild because they may eventually get into man killers so that's why uh, the transportation cage makes very important uh, a role uh, when we are trying to mitigate such kind of conflicts and then uh, as we all know that human private primate conflict is also growing Uh, uh, in in urban areas and wildlife officers have created some primate conditioning uh, cages and then we were doing a, a laparoscope a laparoscopic method of uh, uh, surgery and releasing them back in the wild for both males and females so the reproduction uh, will be stopped and then probably after 4 to 5 years uh, their population will be under control 
So the uh, uh, nutshell, the steps to reduce conflict is spreading awareness, understanding the role of animals in our ecosystem, learning avoidance behavior, maintaining cleaner surroundings, depending less on forest produce or the natural uh, resources, understanding the natural behavior of the animal around us and continued research. So, and apart from that, the effective collaboration. Now also, I really encourage the collaboration between uh, uh, NIDM and uh, uh, the other institute that such kind of collaborations always proves uh, a very successful and uh, interesting for every uh, uh, stakeholders or even the future generation should understand the concept of the entire ecosystem so that uh, uh, we can achieve in a better way. So, uh, I, I would really insist uh, all the uh, uh, participants here, uh, whatever the way of uh, uh, collaboration is possible in your respective uh, expertise can always help uh, dealing with all living being on the earth. So uh, don't ever think that, okay, I'm an engineer, I will not be able to contribute. So I'm a doctor, I will not be able to contribute. So wherever, whatever the field, even the architectural designers are making a lot of uh, 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 fencing mechanisms or fencing designs in order to uh, avoid the animal getting into human habitat. So with this, I will conclude and then thank you for listening. And if you have any questions, I am happy to answer. Hope I have not taken much time. sir. Thank you so much, sir. You have very wonderfully presented and highlighted the man and animal conflict aspects of, uh, of our ecosystem and uh, the various casualties which happen due to these conflicts and how to mitigate those uh, conflicts and how to sensibly uh, handle those conflicts and take actions on that. I hope everyone have found this presentation and information very useful and insightful. And uh, uh, I now request uh, our students and audience if they have any questions to sir, they may ask. And they may raise your raise their hands and ask their questions. So I have been uh, messaged by one of my students to ask a question: What should be our behavior if we come across any wild animal accidentally? Yeah, wonderful question. So in case if you are in your place and then encountering such things, uh, you have to immediately inform the forest department. In case if you are in their place, then you have to be quiet. You should not even make extra movements because uh, it's not your place. You don't know how to behave in their place. So it is, it is very simple that if you are in your home, you know how to behave. And if you are in somebody's home, you should be quiet. So so uh, I think that uh, answers your questions and you don't need to be overwhelmed with the uh, animal's presence there. So accept it. And then as long as you are not making any kind of provoking uh, processes, like throwing something or trying to take a selfie or making sudden movements, uh, it, it will not uh, disturb any animal. But again, in one word, I will not be answered because it depends on the individual species. Uh, it may vary between elephants to bear, bears to leopard, leopard to snake. So. So in, 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 in general, I just wanted to give you a clue that don't make any uh, major movements or uh, disturbing uh, movements for the animal. So it, 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 it's uh, usually even if you're encountering a tiger 10 meters away from you, they will not come and attack you. As long as you are quiet and not uh, provoking them, they will definitely see you and then they make sure that this is not the species I really wanted to go and interact. So they will leave. Thank, Thank you, you so sir. much. Hope that answers your question. Yes, yes, sir. Sir. yes. yes Janvi, please ask. Sir, Janvi, you, sir. This is Janvi from uh, SRMU BBA first year. I've got a question that how does the local community living in fringe forest area will help wild animal uh, rescue operations? Yeah, many a times uh, they 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 always uh, extend themselves as the volunteers. And we always say that try to keep the extra crowd away from that particular area. So that uh, one of the important procedure of any rescue operation is crowd control. So if we manage to do the crowd control, as I said, animals will be always expected to have certain behavior. 
but not people. So that is why we always have to give uh, uh, adequate attention to people around us so that uh, uh, the uh, rescue operation will be smooth. So we always use the local people to keep the uh, extra crowd away from us so that whosoever is meant for the rescue activity will use their own brain to do and deal with the rescues. Otherwise, 100 other options and 100 other suggestions will come from a local scientist which we will not be able to execute on field. So that is why we should always keep them away and use the local people so that they will have, uh, they are like stakeholders of that place. So uh, as soon as the rescue is done, then we will always ask them, see, this is the animal caught into a snare. Please make sure don't uh, 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 allow, I mean, if you find any strangers, because many a times people from, uh, people away from that locality comes in and put the, uh, place the snares and other stuff not really the local community there. So that's why they know because they are living in that place for a long time and they know these animals comes and they always be casual. Yes, sir. Oh, elephant aata hai, kuch khata hai, jata hai. So they, they will not even take it itna, uh, personally, but uh, people from outside investing something on that particular area will be over uh, uh, reactive. And most of the time people, especially living in urban area, capture a piece of land and make a nice, uh, uh, probably a compound wall or a proper fencing, which exclude or which gives a major disadvantage to the local cattle population. And they have no other choice apart from entering into the forest. So somewhere person sitting in the urban area is creating the conflict. And he is putting the life of those villagers at risk just by investing money on that particular two acre land in the very remote area because he wants to uh, get a free oxygen because we know that now we are paying so much for the oxygen and he really wants to uh, get a free oxygen from that place. But whenever he is going to come only, he can get it. He can't reserve the oxygen now. So that is the problem. And people will make uh, boundaries and then create uh, issues. So such uh, uh, times also we use the local uh, community to create a small opening. Let it be a protected land of somebody's living in Australia or even America. But here, allow the cattle to graze that particular piece of land so that the cattle will fulfill their need within their uh, uh, human habitat. They don't need to go to the forest and then start compensating the uh, their food uh, resources. And eventually, all these conflicts are uh, just because of food and water of this naturally living animal. Sorry for the elaborate answer. Thank you, fine, sir. Thank you so much, sir. Uh, yes. Now, next in the line, we have our own Dr. Amit Sinha, sir, who will be speaking on the topic financial preparedness towards disaster management. May I now request um, uh, Ms. Shrinkla to introduce Dr. Amit Sinha, sir, please. Shrinkla, please unmute yourself. Thank you. Difficulties in your life don't come to destroy you, but to help you realize your hidden potential. With this, I would like to introduce another skilled speaker, Dr. Amit Sanhasan, Assistant Professor, Institute of Management, Commerce and Economics, SRMU. Sir has an experience of over 25 years in corporate. He was ex-head of marketing Sahara India Life Insurance Company and has exposure in life insurance for eight years, FMCG and retail store for nine years, web media for three years, and experience of five years in corporate training and business consultancy. Sir has completed his PGDBA from IPM Lucknow and PhD in disaster management from SRMU Lucknow. He has attended MDP on customer loyalty from IM Lucknow and completed a training program on rural and micro insurance from Insurance Institute of India, Mumbai. He has completed his online course on financial strategies for managing economic impacts of disaster from NIDM New Delhi. And on top of it, Sir has also completed comprehensive disaster management course from NIDM New Delhi. Sir has been trained under a one-year training program on BAN ERP by Tata Infotech, key process owner for SCM function for Sahara project. 
I would like to ask sir to please carry forward the session. This, uh, thank you so much, uh, Shanta. Uh, the slide is visible. Please confirm. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. It is visible, thank but you. not in the full yeah. screen mode. No, 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 no it's no, 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 there. Yes. Uh, thank you so much. Uh, thank you so much, uh, Arun sir and uh, Avdeh sir. I know uh, people are a, a bit apprehensive about the uh, time frame, uh, but uh, your sessions were very engrossing. And I can assure, because I was in insurance, so I, I know I can assure you there would be no uh, uh, much extension to the uh, time limit we have. And I'll uh, finish uh, my session uh, as soon. Uh, but uh, with the due thing, because many there was many questions in the chat box, what we can do, how it is important for us. Uh, so that was important. And I'm uh, touching a subject which is very relevant for each one of us. Because people were having, okay, this is science thing. Uh, I'm a commerce background person. I'm a history student, so it is not for me. I'm, I'm, it is an animal thing has been discussed. I'm from that side, it's not. But what I'm going to talk about is a thing uh, which we are very much um, concerned about, uh, financials, losses. And if, we, if I go for the disaster, so whenever we say there is some disaster, there are so many there are pictures you can have, there are n, n number of uh, disaster and there can be n number of causes as well. Uh, but if we say, if I ask you, what do you really imagine when you, what comes in your mind when you uh, just see something happening uh, or listening information somewhere? So I'm just giving you a blank slide here and I want you to just maybe you can uh, have um, uh, close your eyes and think for a while. What is the first thing that strikes your mind? Like Avadeji was saying, it takes seconds to happen, uh, earthquake to happen, and maybe in within two, three seconds, things happen like anything. So what strikes you in your mind before I go to your um, uh, further in my deliberation? So I, I believe you have something image, maybe it's a, in, an image of mass destruction. Yes or no? You can uh, give me some uh, input in chat box. Yes or no? Other loss of life, huge, because every disaster, disaster means it, it's a loss of life, maybe. Or loss of assets, yes or no? Can I have some thumbs up or something, response from your side? Or definitely, when we think of disaster, the next thing that comes uh, in our mind is uh, emotional trauma. Something bad has happened. Uh, I, so something is happening. There, there may be interrupted communication or any of other things. And maybe the important thing that is loss of your uh, financial, uh, your personal savings, maybe your job, your future thing, that strikes you a, in a second wave maybe, in a later stage. First, you get a shock if something bad has happened. The very word disaster is a combination of two words, this and astro. It's a, a Greek uh, uh, term uh, that, that means bad star. So something bad has happened and it can be in various forms. But the very important fact which we all connected with are the uh, our, our savings, our, our present saving, our future savings, uh, or your assurance for our future lives. So what I'll try to do, give you a conceptual uh, criteria, which you can have, and uh, there, are, there would be some tips which you can practically uh, start uh, practicing from the day one itself. Maybe after this session, you can uh, do something for the your your own disaster preparedness. So there is a small, um, uh, if we say, what is the disaster management cycle? So uh, there is an event that disaster has happened. So the next uh, thing is having a response. Uh, Arun sir, uh, do you have any uh, question or uh, it was uh, in response to my uh, question. I think uh, that thing is clear now. Uh, so uh, disaster happens, we, we come directly go for a response, uh, maybe in terms of saving some lives, maybe providing some relief, uh, uh, distributing food, uh, maybe clothes, something. And there is a phase of disaster recovery. And then again, it's a mitigation, prevention and reduction uh, of uh, disaster that is planned out of this learning. And these two phases, there's a disaster preparedness. 
comes here. So if broadly we see, you see there are five uh, elements of a disaster management cycle. There is a response to, uh, and a recovery and prevention, mitigation and preparedness. So what I'm going to touch is up your preparedness thing and especially uh, related to finance, right? Uh, basically, disasters uh, saying some extreme event that happens and that that uh, that events have some hazardous uh, element in them, and there is a vulnerability, a vulnerability, and then disaster happens. So this is a very simple equation. There may be extreme event happening in the maybe if uh, some some low pressure area is being created way uh, high high seas. So it may not have, though it is a dangerous, but it will not have effect on human life. So it it is hazard, hazardous, but since um, humans are not uh, near to that event, or maybe in some uh, desert storm is there uh, in, in, in desert, but where there is no population, so the vulnerability is not there, and then there is no disaster. But if all three things are matching, then there is a disaster. Here is a simple formula for that. And here I would like to uh, bring your attention, vulnerability in terms of maybe resources uh, is very important because if you can cope with that vulnerability, then there would be no disaster. For example, uh, there are uh, countries in current pandemic time, those who are advanced uh, technology, they have advanced technology in terms of medicine, in some of supply chain things. So uh, there we can very say disaster impact is lesser. And those who have a uh, resource, uh, they are uh, le lesser in resource, definitely disaster are uh, there in a bigger way. So it's a simple uh, definition. I will not uh, go into detail uh, as uh, we are approaching the time, but uh, I want to uh, bring you to a certain um, uh, awareness level why this uh, financial preparedness is very important in uh, our time. So uh, it's brief history, uh, way back in 1990, 90 to 99, the first time something happened at international level when United Nations uh, declared a, disaster, a decade for natural disaster reduction. Then there was a first uh, conference happened in Yokohama in 1994 in Japan, where it was con uh, all the member of United Nations decided to have formed a, some strategy for a safer world. Safer world where uh, uh, disaster are having lesser impact. So there was an outcome, there was a Yokohama strategy. And then in second conference happened in uh, 2005 in Kobe, Hugo again in Japan. And there was a review of the strategy plays in 1994 and there were some action were planned that we will do in uh, next decade that is 2005 to 15 wherein emphasis was given the country should work in a more resilient way uh, of uh, so that there are uh, uh, lesser impact on disaster uh, on communities because what happens uh, why united nation was supposed to do all these things because whenever something is happening somewhere disaster are not uh, limited to one uh, small geography they impact uh, entire globe maybe uh, multiple countries are affected and at that time relief is spent so united nation as a as a, as a core body of uh, all the uh, countries uh, nations they have some responsibility so they thought it is better to have some resilience and third conference that happened in 2015 at Sendai in Japan, wherein it was says there should be uh, some work on disaster reduction and the time frame given was 2015 and 30. The, the logic of showing this uh, screen is this is what the happening, uh, uh, how disaster management is uh, being taken yesterday, uh, though uh, uh, Dr. Uh, Mr. Ashish Panda sir have uh, given a thought on it and presented this thing. Uh, so I'm, I want to uh, uh, emphasize some priorities that were placed in 2000 uh, and Sendai framework and where in, in article, these are some important articles uh, were there which talked about pre-disaster management and where in article 30B says there should be disaster risk transfer and insurance. So first time, this is the uh, more, most of the important line maybe of my presentation, how, which is related to you what you can do. I was seeing in the chat box, there were so many people asking what we can do. There is a theory, so this is theory, this is theory, what I can do. 
And I can tell you, my dear friends, uh, uh, I've been in insurance business for quite some time. And uh, still in India, the insurance penetration is less than uh, maybe 7%. And now you can see from a vulnerability from the point of disaster, if we want around 140, 140 crores people are having an insurance penetration of around 6 to 7%, you can understand what sort of vulnerability and disaster we are talking about. It's a financial disaster. And at, at global level also, it is said in a study, if you are spending one, there is a ratio of one to 10. If you are spending one, a dollar and disaster preparedness, uh, then maybe you need to spend other. If you don't have one dollar at preparedness, you may end up paying ten dollars post disaster. So this is the importance of your financial preparedness at individual level. I'm not saying at a, definitely it is important at community level, at a state level, maybe at country level, at globally there are uh, uh, consortium of uh, countries. They are doing it. So what we can do at our level, if we say uh, there is a like it, there is a, a simple uh, uh, you can say there is a one uh, one side. If you do these things, then load on the government would be lesser. If you are not heavy on this side, definitely these things would be more uh, getting more importance or more. For example, if we take life insurance. If we take house house insurance, we are around 280 people here, and we can just um, uh, think of uh, do a diagnostic test. How many of you or your family? You can ask uh, your mother, father, or maybe uh, if you yourself is a guardian, do you have a insurance? Your do is it your family covered for health insurance? Is it your family covered with a house insurance, home insurance? or business insurance, crop insurance, business insurance. Do you have this such protection? Otherwise, there can be any disaster. Maybe it's a pandemic or like COVID-19 or maybe earthquake or maybe like cyclone, you are moving on the road. Suddenly uh, some tree is falling on the, your vehicle. Maybe you, it's parking outside your home. And uh, like we have seen in Mumbai, uh, uh, in front of Trident Hotel, there was a fleet of cars and suddenly uh, hoarding or maybe uh, some, some something fell on that uh, uh, price costly vehicles and they were destroyed. So if you are, do you have a business, there are uh, home construction rules as, as well. Are you following those rules or you are ignoring that, uh, those rules when you are constructing your house? So these are the something, uh, are you using banking system or you are keeping your gold or savings or cash in your home or in uh, for an institution like earthquake, maybe your house is uh, collapsed, some, some house is collapsed or maybe it's a flood, the entire area is gone. So these savings can be gone. So even do you have any local association or membership for a fallback arrangement as a society can come forward uh, uh, and help you there. So uh, these are the some basic precaution preparedness uh, um, uh, tools I can share with you and you can think of and you can practice it maybe from today itself. If you are doing that, then maybe the society or government, maybe need, they need to release lesser subsidy. They need to uh, spend less on the rehabilitation. There are uh, lesser expenditure on a public uh, maintenance. Uh, there are lesser loan waiver is to be given, uh, various compensation, maybe of a lesser amount. Because if these amounts are not lesser, then government will not be able to spend on the uh, welfare of the uh, society back. They cannot use these funds in developmental issues. So this is again a very important aspect how we are managing our disasters. So uh, uh, I'll try to share some recommendation though it's on personal level, but uh, I'm sure uh, the, an IDM say uh, Ashish Panda sir is here. He can have a look on this and maybe uh, we can have some policy somewhere. Um, our, our government may make life insurance compulsory for people, especially in an India country like India, it cannot be made compulsory because of variation in income levels. There are so many people that they are below poverty line and government needs to provide food, maybe almost free at a rate of two rupees or one rupee maybe. So, but especially the people living in a disaster prone area can be given a compulsory insurance. Uh, it's a matter of debate. Then their government can offer tax benefits, maybe for a lesser house tax, uh, 
or lesser income tax if you are complying disaster uh, norms uh, making your home or you have taken insurance cover maybe tax rebates can be given there <coughs> excuse me or a government scheme should be well intimated many a times government has having some uh, scheme for the people in certain area but uh, because of uh, uh, non uh, uh, information or uh, of a lack of awareness people are not uh, uh, going there and not taking advantage of that uh, i'll finish maybe in a uh, next slide itself and please uh, don't worry uh, we will exceed the time <coughs> excuse me their government's uh, role is of a custodian uh, like i said if the government is supposed to spend the money more money on the uh, compensation or post disaster event so uh, government can save this money if they are spending on the uh, preparedness. There can be some uh, scheme or uh, wherein government can arrange a fund for such uh, disaster if they invite contribution from people, maybe in terms of 5 rupees or 10, uh, 10 rupees at national level, 10 rupees or 5 rupees for a state level and manpower deployed at SDMA, uh, DDMA and Panchati level yesterday. Uh, Panda sir has given the structure uh, in India. So we can utilize this manpower to control money or even um, like BPL card holder are there and Jandan Yojana account is there. So we can get uh, uh, give receipt or generate receipt and people can have option if they can be uh, 5 rupees, 10 rupees can be deducted from that place. Otherwise, people can be uh, can be given monetary uh, disaster insurance. They can automatically given insurance cover by just having a rider of rupees five uh, or ten, maybe from uh, like whenever you are having a buying a health insurance, there can be rider of five rupee or credit card when you are having. Almost all of you must be having credit card or debit card. But if there is a policy of compulsory disaster um, uh, insurance. In, a, in form of rider of rupees 10, 15, 20, 50, uh, you can very well uh, go for that and have that thing and safeguard yourself. So these can be some, uh, uh, sorry, uh, uh, options. And uh, uh, again, there can be, government can encourage PPP model, that is uh, public private partnerships uh, for uh, uh, disaster, financial preparedness of disaster. Like there are so huge CSR funds with the company, it is made compulsory under company law to uh, if there's some companies having profits. So they have to part their certain uh, uh, profit into CSR. And this CSR funds can be channelized through disaster management. There can be fixed policy for that. If a company in that area, maybe some hilly area, there are companies that are registered, then they have to spend certain amount in that particular area for disaster resilience maybe uh, making of a building or maybe retrofitting like in civil engineering there was a wall so there uh, there are rivers or maybe there can be border bodies so these csr funding can be utilized in um, re-strengthening the old structure like yesterday professor anil uh, kumar gupta ji has said we need uh, we need to combat with the sick building syndrome so maybe that CSR funding can be channelized towards those buildings for which uh, maybe public sector uh, buildings, public building, old uh, heritage buildings, where no uh, direct investment or direct expenditure is not possible. Government can also promote group insurance as at block level and village level, and maybe subsidy can be provided there. Again, government can promote direct benefit transfer to attract maximum enrollment of people from disaster prone area. Point is that if, uh, uh, for example, if you are living in a, a disaster prone area, maybe in a hilly area or flood area, and your house tax is linked with the, that uh, disaster compliance thing, if so you have your house there, you have taken some uh, insurance, so there would be direct benefit transfer to your account from the government, or government can, uh, may, can ask people, uh, maybe insurance uh, uh, IRDAI of India, to uh, uh, instruct company to come forward, make such a customer friendly um, uh, insurance scheme. Uh, like in today's pending time, there were uh, uh, Corona uh, cover were offered by many health insurance company. You have to uh, spend a small amount and your Corona treatment is taken care of under insurance. So uh, uh, what I wanted to give you a conceptual idea here uh, in my, my uh, maybe I, I was a bit fast uh, because of time constraint, but the idea is that 
if we are saving a one rupee today, it can help us protect maybe 10, 15, 20, or maybe more tomorrow. So uh, it is very important for all of us uh, for, as a takeaway, uh, the financial thing is actually, if we lack, what happens if we don't have finance for uh, coping with these disaster? Actually, it's a financial resource. So uh, any disaster management cannot be think of uh, if we don't have a financial planning attached to it. So uh, thank you so much. And if you have any, any questions, please uh, uh, put, put that. Thank you so thank much. Thank you so much, sir. So you have very well presented the financial preparedness aspect of disaster management, how we can go for uh, various uh, life insurance, various, uh, various insurance options for preparing ourselves for such disasters and uh, making ourselves more secure in this uh, uncertain world, uncertain world of various economic uncertainty, various uh, disaster uncertainty. So I hope uh, our audience have found this uh, session very insightful. And uh, if anyone have any question, may please raise your hand and ask the question. Anyone from the audience who want to ask some question? Mansuri Singh. Yes. Hello. Uh, hello, ma'am. Uh, am I audible? Yes, yes. yes. You are. Uh, hi, everyone. Uh, my name is Manasvi Singh, and uh, I'm a final year architecture student. So, my question is from actually everyone uh, uh, Amit Sina, sir, Avdeer, sir, and Ashish, sir. Uh, sir, uh, due to these emerging disasters, which are actually uh, very unpredictable, so what possibility do you see that? how can we inculcate these disaster management paradigms into the urban fabric of India? Because as you can see, the urban fabric is growing substantially and it's, it's uh, in a way it's staggered. So do you see a possibility of uh, maybe container houses taking place uh, or uh, they are being placed into the urban fabric of our country so that these disasters, um, see, we can't stop these disasters, but we have to be prepared at some point. So do you see a potential future of such kind of technology that is being introduced in India? Uh, sir, uh, who will take? Uh, I, uh, this, sir, or uh, uh, architecture? Yes, you are civil engineer. Sir, please admit yourself. Avdeh, sir, please admit you. Because on ke talk se thoda sa closely relate karta hai. Green I, city ek baat jo sir First of all, okay. I would like to uh, appreciate this question. This question is asked. Or abhi chat box mein aap dekhega. I have article bhi apna share kiya. Or istifaq ki jaye ye baat hai. I have pane parso hi likha tha LinkedIn ke upar. Abhi jab aapka inaugural session hua tha, Professor Anil Kumar Gupta sir ne bhi ye baat utha hi thi. Bilkul same. Ki haan bhai Arvind jo development hai, wo aise aa raha hai. Unhone bhi ye baat kahi. To ye baat sahi hai. जो आपने एक वर्ड भी यूज किया था उसमें कि किस तरीके से तरीके से क्लिशी कंस्ट्रक्शन हो रहे हैं तो ये क्या है था इसको हम लोग बोलते हैं कि दड़वा कल दड़वा समझते हैं ना आप लोग मुर्गी का सब लोग जानते हो कुछ लोग या मुर्गी का एक दड़वा होता है जिसका वेंटिलेशन जीरो कोई फर्क नहीं पड़ता है मतलब यू आर गोइंग अवे फ्रॉम द नेचुरल एजेंसी एंड कमिंग इन कॉन्टेक्ट टू द आर्टिफिशियल हीटिंग आर्टिफिशियल कूलिंग and artificial type of living uh, living of standard to maine ye article bhi share kiya ye linkedin pe mera pada hua hai to maine iska title rakha tha ki gharon se dadbo ki or jaise urban development mein ho kya raha hai basically kya hai agar aap kisi ke paas plan aap architecture se ho to aapko pata hoga building plans jab bante hai to log lekar aate hain wo apni requirement batate hain ki ye hamara area hai aur isi ke under jo hai aapko itne bedroom dene hain itna itna area iske liye dedicate karna hai तो वो ये भूल जाते हैं कि सस्टेनेबिलिटी के लिए कितना होता है आप किसी ने हेमू चौधरी ने कबूतर खाना लिखा है कुछ ठीक है तो दिस टाइप ऑफ टेंडेंसी इज ग्रोइंग डे बाय डे सो बेसिकली दे वांटेड ए प्लेस वेयर दे कैन एंटर एंड डू देयर हाउस होल्ड एक्टिविटी दे फॉरगेट दैट देयर शुड बी अ प्रॉपर वेंटिलेशन देयर शुड बी ए क्लीन एयर अवेलेबिलिटी शुड बी देयर तो ये सारे जितने मेथड्स हैं हमारे हम लोग जो यूज करते हैं कि क्लीन सर्कुलेशन हो और हमारे जो डेवलपमेंट में गार्डन वैसी भी चीज हो तो इतने ज्यादा छोटी जगह हो गई कि वहाँ गार्डन वगैरह नहीं होता है और अभी एक सज्जन थे जिन्होंने एक थेरेपी 
करने के लिए पीपल के पेड़ पे अपना घर बना लिया था मतलब पीपल के पेड़ों बैठे थे उन्होंने आर्टिकल उनका निकला था आपने न्यूज पेपर में पढ़ा हो तो वो ऑक्सीजन की सप्लाई की तो उसका काफी लोगों ने मजाक भी बनाया था बट आपको पता है कि जापान के अंदर एक टेक्निक है जिसको हम लोग फॉरेस्ट बाथिंग कहते हैं ये 1982 में वहां पर आ गई थी और मैंने भी अपनी प्रेजेंटेशन में आपको बताया था कि ग्रीन एरिया कैसे अर्बन कॉलोनीज के अंदर भी सस्टेन किया जा सकता है ग्रीन रूफिंग या वर्टिकल हमारे जो गार्डन है उनको कैसे किया जा सकता है अर्बन प्लानिंग के अंदर भी इसको किया जा सकता है तो ये जो मैं अभी फॉरेस्ट बाथिंग की जो नाइनटीन एटी टू में वहां पर हुई थी उसकी जब बात की गई तो उसमें उसके बड़े आश्चर्यजनक परिणाम निकले जिससे लोगों को बड़े बड़े अच्छे अच्छे हेल्थ बेनिफिट्स हुए यानी पेड़ों के बस पास रहने भर से आपको हेल्थ बेनिफिट्स हो रहे हैं आपके मेंटल स्ट्रेस लेवल नीचे आ रहे हैं ब्लड प्रेशर्स आपके कंट्रोल में आ रहे हैं तो ये सब चीजें हो रही है तो ये आप सही कह रहे हैं कि अर्बन जो फैब्रिक है उसमें इस चीज को निगलेक्ट किया जा रहा है बट हाँ अगर आपको इन सारे डिजास्टर से बचना है तो डिजास्टर का इम्पैक्ट सोशल भी है और मेंटल भी है इन सब से बचना तो इनको इनकॉर्पोरेट करना ही एकमात्र तरीका है जैसे ग्रीन बिल्डिंग का मैंने नाम लिया था ना क्रेडल टू ग्रेव कंसेप्ट यानी जब से बिल्डिंग बनी है जब से वो खत्म होगी तब तक वो सस्टेनेबल रहे तो ये सारे कॉन्सेप्ट अपनाने पड़ेंगे बिल्डिंग इंडस्ट्री या फिर जो आपके आर्किटेक्चर का जो प्लानिंग का एस्पेक्ट है उसके अंदर थैंक यू सर नेक्स्ट वी हैव मिस्टर विमल मिस्टर विमल प्लीज इंट्रोड्यूस योर सेल्फ एंड आस्क योर क्वेश्चन मैडम गुड इवनिंग मैडम गुड आफ्टरनून मैडम माय सेल्फ विमल आई एम एडिबल मैडम यस 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 सर सर गुड गुड आफ्टरनून सर आई वुड लाइक टू आस्क क्वेश्चन मिस्टर अमित सर सर टेकिंग क्लास योर इंस्ट्रक्शंस एंड क्लासेस सर एवरीथिंग इज वेरी नाइस सर आई एम वर्किंग एज अ डिप्टी तहसीलदार इन तमिलनाडु एंड एज वेल एज रिसर्च स्कॉलर आल्सो इन डिजास्टर्स मैनेजमेंट आई एम आस्किंग क्वेश्चन सर बिकॉज़ आई एम वेरी न्यू टू दिस प्लेटफार्म माय क्वेश्चन इज Uh, we are already having disaster management policy which is covering all uh, insurance uh, i think uh, it's covering some insurance uh, policies and everything uh, uh, if it is uh, advised to the government uh, it already informed or uh, suggested to the government that is what my first question sir uh, because i am uh, last time in gaja cyclone i am working with the people so hondal uh, living near the coastal areas i am working with them what i have seen that the practically the people are uh, they, they are not having uh, enough uh, space to get their uh, daily needs that is what the major issue first uh, later i realized that uh, what sar said that insurance policy that group policy and individual policy it may be helpful for them my question is whether it is suggest uh, suggested to the government earlier or it is in the progress that is what my question sir sorry for the inconvenience thank you sir sir, sir i would like you to elaborate your question more because uh, group insurance option is available since long insurance of crops is available since long it is just a sir. lack of awareness and initiative on the part of individuals uh, that is ca causing the trouble for example uh, we all we all are uh, driving our vehicles on the road and there is a norms you have to have your vehicle insurance you have to have your personal insurance you have to have your helmet on the place you have to have your seat belts at place but it is the last mile that is ourselves we ourselves are not ready to uh, adopt these uh, available uh, uh, because go what government can do like government has asked us to use masks government has asked us to keep social distances government has asked us to behave in a certain social responsible manner for long but still if we are not following those principles or practices then only us can be uh, we can blame to ourselves only because there is can be since um, uh, ashish sir is present from nitm but what can policy done that policy will remain in the books but it is for us to uh, make it uh, happen to follow it to practice, practice it right maybe you can connect to your local disaster uh, there is a sir, uh, yesterday itself sir said there is a complete structure of uh, uh, ndma structure is there and uh, representation is up to uh, panchayati raj level tak uh, there is a person deputed for helping people for disaster management thing 
every district uh, district uh, collector office dm office is having one person one uh, person is deployed as the apata babu or person or just a representative person in the government machinery so maybe you can connect to that person to help you in your oh. area maybe oh, okay sir okay sir thank you sir thank you sir thank you sir thank you so much sir for answering the question and we have one more question from dr binit sir sir please binit sir uh, good good afternoon to all of you uh, okay. first of all i would like to thank the speakers and the organization to organize such wonderful uh, uh, workshop seminar uh, the my basic question is is there any role of disaster management in defense because uh, this time we heard the news about the navy operation in mumbai a rescue operation was it uh, the operation of the disaster management or was it the part of the defense please हमारे जो कोस्टल सिचुएशन है कोस्टल पोर्शन ऑफ अवर responsibility Uh, it is to rescue the people local government first will will they be having kind of boats that is required in this i mean three three uh, 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 tower building uh, size of uh, i mean wave that is coming in the storm surge that is coming in this times of cyclones no they don't have so they go to coast guards coast guard is the front uh, that army of of navy that protects our coastal areas but again that catchy word beyond beyond the coping capacity this cyclone was of that tune of that magnitude that even the coast guards were not in a position with their smaller kinds of boats and ships to protect the people so in such situations navy is called for to protect the people similarly in the mainland mainland mein aap dekhiye we go for local administrations because it is their responsibility to protect people from any kinds of disaster if it is it goes beyond the coping capacity of the local government then state government then national government is called for then we call ndr of people despite the fact that sdr of people are there in the states we call for ndr of people then we call for uh, sena our army so it is like that it is not that it was whether it was a responsibility of the navy to protect uh, uh, to go for the disaster management exercise or not it depends on situation to situation ki which force that we are having is in a position to protect the people at that particular time it is like that और सर ये जो डिफेंस फोर्सेस जितने भी हैं ये बहुत बड़ा हिस्सा होती हैं डिजास्टर रिस्पांस का कि जिसका स्पेशलाइज एरिया है वो उसके बारे में ज़्यादा जानने का और ज़्यादा एफिशिएंटली रेस्क्यू ऑपरेशंस को वहाँ पर कंडक्ट कर सकता है तो इसलिए जित एक जैसे आपने अभी नेवी का नाम लिया है तो केवल नेवी ही नहीं जो हमारा एक और, और फोर्सेज जो हैं इवन पुलिस का भी इसमें रोल आता है और जितने भी हमारे ऑर्गेनाइजेशन है आपने देखो नेशनल डिजास्टर मैनेजमेंट अथॉरिटी मैनेजमेंट इन इंडिया in the similar manner defense forces or ndrf including national disaster disaster response can be considered as an arm so arms are needed to uh, uh, recover or uh, you can say the rescue conducting these rescue operation from various crucial location in all across the country and we also provide uh, this assistance at global level to other countries as well like in 2015 nepal and so can other disaster that outbreak in another, some other country but we provide our assistance to them with the help of our uh, expertise in rescue and that is the beauty of the institutional mechanism that we are having in our country like this ndrf that is specialized force four in battalions two battalions are well trained in cbr and exercises you are this uh, uh, biological disasters this radiological disaster nuclear disasters 
so god forbid in baba atomic research center in mumbai if some kind of disaster strikes then definitely since we are having the system uh, in, in our umbrella we will definitely go and ask for ndr of those battalions which are capable of dealing with those kinds of situation so in this cyclone navy was the right that uh, authority or uh, our force that should have been asked they were asked and they delivered like anything it is like that thank you sir thank you so much uh, due to time constraint we uh, we will now only have two more questions others are requested to please post their questions on chat box mr rajiv sharma and mr jyoti ranjan have have raised their hands for asking the question so i now request mr rajiv sharma sir to please uh, ask his question to please first unmute himself and ask his question very good afternoon am i audible yes sir okay first of all i would like to pass my gratitude to all the speakers out over here yesterday and today uh and um, i really like todesh uh, kumar's inputs out over there using green building lead certificate certifications and uh, on top of it uh, are using the artificial intelligence let me introduce myself to the forum plus my name is rajiv sharma i'm i'm the executive director for one of the global infrastructure management companies called as johns lang lasal and i take care about the uh, center of excellence for uh, the entire infrastructure management in the entire panel yeah based out of bangalore now my question uh, to ashish sir is that we have been partnering for various type of disasters with various government agencies police paramilitary forces armed forces ndrf and all those things are we trying to link up with some association of having civil marshals by associating in uh, a national institute of disaster management with these ipcs because we carry a lot of uh, qualified engineers into multiple domains who are uh, extremely extremely trained in uh, disaster management and recovery management and even business continuity management so is there any agenda from the nidm moving on to uh, look into the availability of civil marshals uh, community wise locality wise so that there is at least somebody trained enough to respond uh, this is a wonderful idea but uh, sorry to say that uh, we being that force that uh, goes for this training and uh, developing capacity building as far as our country is concerned with respect to disaster risk management but a wonderful idea this is this field marshal thing and those engineers which are capable of helping out uh, in disaster scenarios that should be trained and specifically specifically identified with respect to the data bank we should be having in the times of disaster so i will note down this your suggestions i am and at, at right forum in nidm i will i will put it there sir thank happy you happy to happy to uh, take this this discussion forward because once a country is at stake i think it becomes the responsibility of everyone to yes, stand yes, with yes. each other and uh, being the representative of one of the largest infrastructure management we manage large it parks residential localities across the uh, in coastal areas and the urban areas and all those things we definitely can't stop the urban uh, fabric getting uh, expanded but for example uh, we we consistently promote green building concepts lead certifications uh, usable of uh, renewable energy sources so that we can uh, have less carbon footprints and all those things so um, i would love to volunteer myself to be a part of that discussion sure. and if we can do sure. something I, for the nation thank you thank I you will, i would like i would like to have your contact details sir rajiv sharma ji yes. i'll just so post it on the chat box yeah fine fine we will fine. be having some programs together as well and probably our this uh, 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 government of india initiative of cdri probably there also you can be utilized like anything thank sure. you rajiv sir thank you for coming forward and raising a relevant issue before us now i request uh, miss uh, mr jyoti ranjan sir to please unmute himself and ask his question uh first of all good afternoon everyone and trust all of uh, doing good and all are fine so uh, i am an ex air force and presently working uh, in a it company looking after the security of uh, pune and hyderabad so uh, I, my question uh, answer thanks to the host and uh, Uh, Asis sir, uh, Ramesh sir, for that uh, wonderful presentation, and all the panelists, uh, it was really helpful, knowledgeable, and uh, it was an excellent presentation. So my question is, as we know that vulnerability uh, uh, is an uh, means essential, uh, essential element for the disaster impact. So uh, is there a different types of vulnerability means uh, with uh, reference to the disasters? 
we all know we were, it's 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 uh, interlinked with the vulnerabilities with the disaster so if the, uh, means there are different if we connect vulnerability with the disaster so can we link it or uh, uh, in other words uh, i can ask how and in what ways can uh, vulnerability to disaster be characterized uh, uh, and actually you, you want correlation between vulnerability and disasters yeah means means if it is linked so means a disaster comes in different manners the means as we talked uh, it may be the natural or a human error or in a different way so for every vulnerability means uh, we, how can we connect with the disasters means uh, uh, or uh, in what ways can vulnerability to disasters be characterized i think you are Wait, asking I, sir uh, sir yeah. i think i think you are Adai, asking Adai Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Please. Okay. Just a moment. Then, okay, then you, okay, you okay, can sir. put in. Okay. 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 Yesterday, uh, if you could have seen my that presentation, that example of Japan, they are flooded yes, with uh, flooded with earthquakes like anything. I mean, uh, even the small uh, child knows how to protect himself or herself with respect to earthquake. They are so much knowledgeable with respect to that. The kind of wooden infrastructure they 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 utilize in their areas that is very very good with respect to the kind of vulnerability they have with respect to earthquake, but. in indian conditions like in kosi belt where this every year we are finding floods and that is uh, attacking our our that region uh, that uh, ganga basin so probably this wooden technology would not be proper with respect to those kinds of uh, societies where uh, floods are more in, uh, more prone into into happening so one uh, that is social vulnerability you can say or physical vulnerability you can say of the, of the that geographical area another thing is like in mumbai if you see we find slums okay we find slums everywhere in in any big metro the cities uh, don't they want to live in earthquake resistant buildings they want but they can't because of economic restraints so that is economic vulnerability with respect to that so different kinds of vulnerabilities and different kinds of sections of societies they need different kinds of attentions so disaster is going to strike different sections of the society in different capacity so according that is why vulnerability is very very important to understand so this sendai framework of disaster reduction avdesh ji was mentioning that is priority number 1 first understand what is your disaster risk so how will you identify your risk risk identification as uh, uh, this uh, important uh, this chapter on vulnerability identification first the kind of area you are exposed to sensitive sensitivity of the local community with respect to the kind of disasters that might take place in that area and vulnerability of course that is very very important to understand then only the impact of disaster can be understood and accordingly measures can be applied with respect to lessen the impacts of disasters on those particular communities so very well connected these two issues and rightfully mentioned by you thank you thank you sir thank you so much sir now moving on uh, avdeev avdeev ji wanted to say something avdeev ji yes sir, sir. Uh, yes, sir i think sir I, i i understand that uh, he, um, i think he wanted to know that vulnerability and disaster relation basically so uh, when we calculate the risk so vulnerability is an integral uh, component to uh, by which we can access what the risk exist in a particular society and uh, you know this vulnerability can be divided uh, into uh, part like human social physical economic and cultural environment so uh, on the basis of what we are accessing whether we are accessing the direct losses or indirect losses so vulnerability is not a single term it is a combination of many vulnerabilities okay so when this vulnerability combined and access as a whole so we will get uh, the idea of what risk exist at that particular location what type of measures we need to uh take in order to in order to check uh, uh, the hazard not converted into the disaster okay yes sir hazard har jagah hote hain hazard har jagah hote hain bas musibat tab bante hain jab wo disaster mein badal jaye to to isko rokne ke liye humko jo vulnerability assessments hote hain ye sara karna padta hai uske baad hame risk calculate ho ke aayega uska to hum hazards ko rok sakte hain disaster banne thank you sir thank you thank you sir on uh, elaborating the answer uh, moving ahead with the end to end this uh, to end the second day of efdp uh, please allow me to welcome dr raj lakshmi ma'am uh, to uh, conclude the uh, today's event today's day of uh, three sessions 
through which we have learned a lot we have uh, uh, we have take a uh, lot of lots of takeaways and insights may i now request ms shrinkla sena to please introduce uh, dr raj lakshmi ma'am so that no, she I can i think uh, dr anushri i think i can just start because we are already running short of time okay uh, thank you so much dr anushri uh, just to start with a small quote of alfred einstein learn from yesterday live for today and hope for tomorrow i think this was the crux for all the three session the wonderful speakers has spoken so well a lot of insight has been given and a very quickly recap i'll give in a minute so uh, i will start with the dr avadesh sir like uh, he basically emphasized on the technology like uh, uh, efficient planning is needed for keeping a check on this climate change rainwater harvesting uh, well plan mapping concept of survivor bias was discussed investment or infrastructure was very important in india to be a leader so avdesh sir your examples was really very touching you have taken such a small small example of from our daily life and i really feel great to be an audience for, of your session and uh, going ahead to arun sir arun sir uh, i think arun sir is here arun sir it was you know uh, 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 vanakita national park was the first uh, um, childhood memory for me also and uh, you have really touched a uh, great session by uh, telling us about the wildlife uh, sos then uh, elephant conservation uh, detail you have given concept of ecocentrism wildlife protection act 1972 you have discussed very beautifully mishandling animals like snake may lead to casualties it's very important and you have given all the basic aspect for mitigation physical financial behavior education scientific rescue and research so these are all very very important uh, areas you touched and i am very sure that your ppt can use for our kids also because you know one thing uh, i really like the the video you have shared with us and last but not least uh, dr amit sinha wonderfully explained about the disaster management and financial preparedness the conference held in japan was very well discussed by mr sinha then uh, his recommendation was very beautiful for the future and with these lines i want to end my concluding remarks because we are already running short of time over to you dr anushri thank you so much audience thank you so much ma'am and now with this we end this day of our uh, training program we will meet again tomorrow at uh, 10:30 am with same link with again three more speakers on some more relevant issues of disaster management and preparedness and risk reduction i hope you all have enjoyed the today's session we all, you all have taken so much insights and takeaways uh, from today's session and will apply those in in our daily life in our uh, um, uh, in, in the society we live thank you so much it was an honor to be with you all thank you namaste thank you all. Thank you. Bye bye. Thanks, Anushree, ma'am. Thank you, sir.